This video will be an examination of some of the world's top magicians. Almost everyone believes that the best magicians in the world only use incredibly quick sleight of hand to perform their quote tricks. Many have the impression that the top magicians are just so good at what they do, that there's a natural explanation for their performances, even if we can't see it or figure it out. In other words, most believe that there must be a non-spiritual explanation for all the apparent signs and wonders magicians perform. While this may be the correct conclusion for some of the quote magic that people generally see, there are other magic acts that clearly go beyond the laws of nature. For example, there is no way without supernatural assistance that cards can instantly appear in someone's hands out of thin air. But as you can see, that is exactly what is happening. Yet most will still insist despite the clear evidence to the contrary that these magic acts do have an explanation that doesn't require the supernatural to be involved. They will say that being this good at magic is only the result of a tremendous amount of hard work which has enabled them to perfect their craft. But that can't be the real explanation for how these individuals are able to perform this kind of magic. You know, it's funny, even in this day and age, they still think magicians use their sleeves. So all you do is cast a spell, and there's the A so hard. They could only perform these signs and wonders with the assistance of spiritual forces. As we will see, this has even been admitted by the top magicians. In this video, I will provide overwhelming evidence that most of the top magicians, whether they know it or not, are possessed and that they are certainly assisted by demons or fallen angels. Some may ask how I believe these magicians became possessed and fell under such demonic control. Most of them became possessed by attempting to contact spirits or by fooling around with the occult. Some of them may have sold their souls to the devil. In return, the devil gave them special power, fame, and fortune in this world. Assistance from the devil and demons is the way these top magicians have acquired these special quote magic skills, which makes them different from regular magicians who aren't necessarily receiving spiritual intervention. The spiritual assistance and intervention of demons is the only explanation for how the world's top magicians are able to do what they do. It needs to be pointed out that God has clearly revealed that to contact unknown spirits or to quote channel them is mortally sinful. It's activity he condemns. Those who do so open themselves up to demons and invite them to take possession of their souls. No way. In this video, you will see many examples of false signs and wonders performed by many of the top magicians in the world. This will prove that a spiritual world exists. 
we will now look at statements from other top magicians who admit that their magic comes from spirits. David Copperfield is the most famous magician in history. Copperfield has openly admitted that spirits are solely responsible for some of his magic. Copperfield has also traveled the world collecting items which people say are haunted. He has spent millions collecting these magic items. You see, I've been uh, traveling around the world collecting artifacts, items that people say are haunted. They say if you concentrate hard enough, you can awaken the spirits inside these objects and cause the objects to move without explanation. And I brought one of those objects with me tonight. It's that table over there, folks. Pick up the table and bring it down here. And everybody, get down on one knee. Just keep your fingertips lightly in contact with that table. Keep your eyes right here at the center. Right here at the center of the table. Don't press down. Exactly. We're going to try to concentrate and awaken the spirits inside this table and cause it to rise up into our fingertips. But it's important you follow my instructions exactly. I should concentrate right here and very slowly. Stand up in slow motion. Feel it rise. Feel that table rise. Slower, slower. Feel it rise and it will rise. Yes. Listen carefully now. Lift up both hands. Put them back. Catch it. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. And this table will do whatever we tell it to do. Table, come this way. Come on, table. Move this way. Come on. If you feel it move, move with it. Back this way. Come on, David. Move this way. I uh, have an incredible museum of, of magic that's uh, uh, dealing with all the artifacts of all the great magicians of the past. Uh, uh, their posters, their programs, their, their books, hundreds of thousands of, of magic books. Welcome to my secret, top secret, the International Museum and Library of the Conjuring Arts, uh, with items belonging to Keller, Houdini, Thurston, uh, all the great masters of the past. I just bought this big magic collection mm -hmm. um, that was about to get split up and kind of uh, either split up and, or sent out of the country. And one of the first things, uh, one of the greatest things in the collection is this first magic book. And the reason it was written was because uh, it's called The Discovery of Witchcraft. It was written in 1584. Copperfield founded the International Museum and Library of the Conjuring Arts. The museum comprises approximately 80,000 items of magic history. It is reportedly the world's largest collection of magic memorabilia. Some appraisers have estimated Copperfield's magic collection alone to be worth $500 million. One of the items in the collection treasured by Copperfield is the remaining portion of a house of prostitution. During a storm that swept through the area, the house of prostitution was struck by lightning and all the prostitutes were killed. The presence of ghosts and spirits have been documented for centuries. In 1931, the Barclay House mysteriously burned to the ground. All of its occupants perished in the fire, but some say they live on. Do you believe in ghosts? If you don't, before the night's over, we might change your mind. I'm David Copperfield, and welcome to A Night of Magic. We're going to show you an old newsreel. Back in 1927, the old Barclay House was sold at auction to a stranger, a lady from out of state. Soon the whole town realized the house became home to a number of working girls who were entertaining gentlemen callers in the evening. Barclay House became the local scandal, and none of the townsfolk ever spoke of it except to curse it. As if their dreams came true, a storm swept through the state and lightning struck the Barclay House. And the house and all the ladies of the night perished in the fire. All that was left was one piece of the structure, the upper room that somehow escaped the destruction. Well, I was able to get the remains of that room and reconstruct it here on stage with us tonight, just so we could see if anything else survived. We took the actual wood from the Barclay House and built a room that could be opened and closed for examination. And that's just what we're about to do. Our folks from the audience, uh, step right over here. I want you to check out the inside, make sure nothing tricky about it, just a bunch of walls that open and close and nothing more, okay? 
You see, there are no material objects in the spirit world, so we have to provide the spirits with objects so they can show their presence. Tonight I'm going to be the medium, the go-between between between the spirit world and our world. So if anything should take place inside our room, I want you to be sure it's the spirits and not me using any trickery. It's important that I can't move. You examine the room? Is it free of any trickery? Fine. And after you've done that, check the knots in my back and my neck. Make sure they're still secure. And once you're satisfied, stand outside the room. So you can see around the sides and behind, making it impossible for anyone to enter or leave the room. Now, no self-respecting spirit would show themselves in the light, so we're going to create a little darkness with this curtain and see if we can make the spirits manifest themselves inside the room. Copperfield also calls out to the spirits to take a coat and the coat is taken instantly from its location and placed on Copperfield's body, even though he can't move his arms and is tied to a chair. I need you to stand over there, and both of you to step over there. Make sure nothing enters or leaves that room. Our next experiment is very strange. We found that if you close the doors to the empty room and listen carefully, you can hear sounds from inside, very strange sounds. It's as if the ladies of the house aren't aware that they're dead. Their spirits have been trapped inside all these years, and Now they're crying to be free. Let me show you what I mean. Shall we? Everyone be still. These curtains were taken from the house before the fire. They're an item the spirits are familiar with, and we're going to use them to enclose ourselves inside the room. Hold up your hands, we're going to hand you the curtains. Very good. We're going to lift the curtains and try to arouse the spirits. Lift the curtains. David Copperfield is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most popular solo entertainer in history. He has sold more tickets than any other solo entertainer in history. His world tours and Vegas shows have grossed four billion and counting. Copperfield's face is on the postage stamps of six different countries. Copperfield got involved in magic at the age of 10. When I did magic, I I found I could do it very well. By age 12, he became the youngest person ever to be admitted to the Society of American Magicians. Copperfield's official website described him as, quote, already an accomplished conjurer by the age of 12. At 16, he was a professor at New York University teaching magic. Copperfield has done many magic acts that have gone down in history as some of the most astounding of all time. In this magic act aired on national television in 2001, Copperfield throws a ball behind his head into the audience. He then asks the woman who got the ball to close her eyes and throw the ball anywhere she wants. She throws the ball and it is caught by a man. Copperfield then asks that person what his initials are. He says TS. Do that right now. Brett, say hi to TS. Hey TS. He then tells him to write T.S. on his arm using a black marker. Copperfield then takes a Polaroid picture of him and some other members of the audience. He then has one of them sign the bottom of the picture. At that point, Copperfield and an audience member get into an exposed thin steel cage and they disappear right in front of the thousands of audience members. They teleport 4,000 miles away to a beach in Hawaii where they have a live camera set up. 
Copperfield then shows the audience back in Memphis the Polaroid picture he just took with audience members in Memphis, as well as the TS marking on his arm. Copperfield then teleports back to Memphis, appearing instantly in the midst of the crowd. Copperfield shows some sand he grabbed from the beach during his trip. In the same event in Memphis, Copperfield made a coin fall in slow motion in a person's hand. He also caused a picture to move on paper. Copperfield also levitated audience members during this same show. Over the years, Copperfield has levitated many people. We floated people outside in broad daylight. I'm too scared. Ah! <laughs> this is a fun. This is nothing. <laughs> Want to go again? He has even flown through the air while proving that he doesn't have any cables or wires attached. He will even carry a person into the air with him as he flies around. Copperfield has included random members of his live audience in his magic acts throughout the decades. For example, in this act, he asked to borrow a tie from a young member of the audience. Jake, step over here, Jake. Can I borrow your tie? Do you mind? I promise to return it to you later. Copperfield then moves the tie around in ways that are absolutely impossible without supernatural assistance. The tie then appears to move on its own. At the end of his act with the tie, he places it in a closed box where it continues to move around. Copperfield has worked a number of, quote, miracles over the decades. Copperfield also walked through the Great Wall of China. During this event, the camera never cut away at any time.
He did this in front of witnesses standing right above the wall. Before Copperfield decides to come out completely on the other side of the wall, he only puts his hands through the wall. He then puts his hands back into the wall. A short time after that, he decides to go completely through the wall. He is then congratulated by the witnesses who saw what he did. Here's an article that ranks the top 10 magicians of all time in their opinion. David Copperfield is listed as the greatest magician of all time. Coming in as the second greatest magician of all time according to this list is Harry Houdini. Houdini died on quote Halloween in 1926. This is a picture of Houdini's grave with magician Chris Angel standing on top of it. This is one of Houdini's poster ads. Look at all the demons on the poster. Poster ads have been used by magicians over the last 100 years as a way to get customers and others to come out to see their performances. Ranking at number 4 and 6 on the list are Chris Angel and David Blaine. They will be covered later in this video. Robert Houdin, a famous French magician who died in 1871, is ranked number seven. This is a French book of writings from Houdin titled, quote, How One Becomes a Sorcerer. Notice the demons, especially the large one right behind Houdin. This is another picture in which demons are holding up a picture of Houdin. Number eight on this list is Harry Blackstone Sr. Blackstone was a famous American magician. He became well known for his performances in the 1930s and 1940s. In Blackstone's poster ads like this one from the 1930s, you can find the clear depiction of demons. On this poster from magician Blackstone, he has 126 demon faces covering the border of the poster ad. In this poster, Blackstone is depicted dressed as a devil. Blackstone's son, Harry Blackstone Jr., also became a famous American magician. He died in 1997 and, like his dad, became one of the most famous magicians in history. In this magic act, Blackstone Jr. doesn't just cause a light bulb to light up without electricity and float in the air. He actually pushes the light bulb out into the audience directly in front of their eyes. Number 9 on this list is the magician Dante. He was considered the greatest magician in the world when he died in 1955. Take a look at Dante's poster ad in which a demon is holding playing cards. It also shows a demon whispering in his ear. This is a clip of one of Dante's performances. Notice that he appears in front of a large image of the devil. There she rests. She could remain there for hours, should I so desire. But watch. Margo, hear me. Are you ready? Then go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for your pleasure, my assistants and I will present the famous Hindu rope trick. In this poster, notice how the demonic figure behind Dante looks just like him. You can see that there is at least one demon in all of these Dante poster ads. There were many other famous magicians of the last century, such as the famous American magician Howard Thurston. He died in 1936 and he was considered one of the most famous magicians of his time. According to reports, Thurston would have people pick cards out of a deck. He would then put the cards back into the deck and shuffle them. 
He would then correctly select the cards that had been chosen by making them rise out of the pack one by one. Notice the demon whispering into his ear on his 1914 promotional poster. Charles Carter was another famous magician. He also died in 1936. He called himself Carter the Great. Some other prominent American magicians were Grover George who died in 1958 and Harry Keller who died in 1922. You are probably noticing a common theme with the poster ads for these famous magicians from the last century. In every single one of these poster ads, there is at least one demon being depicted. This indicates that these magicians knew exactly where they were getting the power to perform their signs and wonders, that is, from demons. The poster ads for these magicians clearly portray demons playing the key role in how these magic acts are being accomplished. The posters clearly demonstrate that these magicians were nothing more than sorcerers used by the devil. This is a poster for a magician and circus performer from Alberta, Canada who calls himself a fire demon. His name is Doug Thompson and he usually refers to himself simply as demon. In a world with billions of people, you pretty much have to set yourself on fire to get noticed. I am Demon Thompson. I perform in Circus of Hell. I put out a cutting torch with a flame temperature at 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit on my toe. The sensation that I get from burning, it's hard for me to even realize that I'm on fire. If I don't actually feel my flesh or a part of me getting physically burnt, it's almost that it doesn't even exist. Okay, hey, you ready? Yep. You found in Circus of Hell, it was more of a natural progression of everything hellish that we we're doing. At some time in my very early childhood, when I first fell in love with fire, I spent a lot of my childhood alone. I was, uh, I was an orphan. And, uh, you know, idle hands of the devil's playground, and we got along very well. All throughout my life, I've been, you could say, demonized. seen anything like it. It's absolutely incredible. See you in hell. <laughs> Demon show Circus of Hell has been featured at many events including the Special Olympics opening ceremonies and Scream Fest. Demon says his wife is a fire witch. Here we see that Demon's wife wears a witch's hat Demon's wife admits that she is a witch. He's the demon and I'm the witch. It's a match made in hell. Here she is with horns on her head. Demon is also a professional welder. His welding channel is called Hell and Back. Here is how Demon introduces his welding videos. Hello once again, I'm your host Demon. Welcome to hell. Hi, I'm Demon and welcome to hell. Hi everybody, I'm Demon, and welcome to hell. Hi, I'm Demon, and welcome to hell. Hi everybody, I'm your host Demon, and welcome to hell. Here Demon says, quote, I use this torch every day in my work as a welder, creating beautiful things out of iron and steel and now I can put it out on my tongue. This is extremely dangerous. The volatile oxyacetylene gas could easily reignite and explode in my mouth, blowing up my head. The flame could severely burn my mouth, face, and lungs. 
or I could inject a lethal air bubble into my tongue because the flame is pressurized and is able to burn underwater. This is no trick, this is real, don't try this. In 2015, Demon became the first person to extinguish a 6300 degree torch. Demon points out that when he's extinguishing the fire with his tongue, there is no protective gel to protect his tongue from the fire. In this video, Demon is set on fire and says, quote, see you in hell. The people laugh and someone says, quote, not if we see you first. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> not if I see you first. This is not video trickery. This is authentic fire eating. Here, Demon gives the double devil horns hand sign next to knocked over crosses. Demon says here, quote, use your demons to your advantage. Demon even put a tattoo of flames on his arm. Demon has a large tattoo of a skull with horns, which is similar to many magicians who feature skull imagery. This is a modern magic book called Tricks of the Mind. It's a book written by Darren Brown, a famous current European magician and hypnotist. Brown, an open homosexual, is pictured on the cover. Notice the incredible similarity to what we just saw over and over again in the poster ads of famous magicians from the last century. Demons on the cover next to the ear giving information. Here is an ad for one of Brown's performances. Notice the demons right near him again whispering information into his ear. The demons give the magicians the information. Brown's 2005 tour show was called, quote, Something Wicked This Way Comes. For his 2011 and 2012 Svengali tour, Brown proclaimed the, quote, wonders of the occult. Brown produced a small book for the tour which he currently sells. Brown also depicts himself with a devil's tail. Brown also sold a video of his different tricks which he called, quote, the devil's picture book. As just stated, Darren Brown is well known throughout the world for his magic. He is also known for conducting things like seances on live TV. A seance is an occult ritual in which people attempt to make contact with the dead in order to receive messages from spirits. Hans Klock from Holland is one of the biggest magicians in Europe. He's also an open homosexual. He was chosen to perform for the opening of the 2006 Soccer World Cup in Germany. He made the trophy appear out of thin air in a glass cage. An estimated 500 million watched his performance. Famous American magician David Blaine's interest in magic began at the age of four, when he was given an occult tarot card deck. Blaine talks about this deck in his book Mysterious Stranger, quote, My grandmother had given my mother an amazing deck of tarot cards. I played with those cards wherever I was. Here is a picture of a tarot card from a deck that Blaine describes as, quote, beautiful in his book, Mysterious Stranger. Tarot cards are representations of occult teachings with pictures. Magic is all I wanted to do since I was a little kid. That was my only dream. Yeah, and, uh, you, know, you know all the different cards in the deck. Right. Okay, so what you'll do is touch one, but do not, do not let me see it. So just, yeah, so just... So just t pull it out or just touch, touch one, touch one, right. whatever you okay. want. Which one? This one? This one. Are you sure? Yeah. Do you want to check? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. Should we show it to the camera? Oh, okay, yeah, good Good idea. And you can't good. see, I mean, clearly there's nothing good. there. That you, there's okay, no well, here, let's let's use your card. Let me just rip a, rip a little piece off. Okay. Hold this. Nothing up my sleeve, just seeing the pieces. Okay. It's gone. What? Well, where did that... <laughs> Where's the rest of it? Can I go in through here? Yeah, yeah, where, sure. So where, where did you get... All right. 
Okay, can you, well, where is it? You could have had any card and we just ripped a little piece off. Right, right. Um, maybe reach into, your, reach into your pocket. You go ahead, reach into your far pocket. No, the far, the, far, far, yeah, you're good. This one? Sure. Just as far away and tell me if there's. Wait a minute. Are you serious? All the way in the bottom. What? How did you? How did you pull? And check it? if it's the right piece. Make sure it fits exactly. Maybe yeah, let them it, see as well. Yeah, it fits. It's it fits, a piece that we It just, fits perfectly. Well, how did you? You didn't touch. <laughs> well, now you freaked me out. You didn't touch me at all. I, and you can see all the, you know, all the different cards in the deck. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can all see them. Looks like a regular deck. Good. And out of all the cards, just take, touch one. Take one out. Okay. Whichever. That right. one. Yeah. Okay. Look at it. Okay. You want to let them see it as well? Okay. You know, I can see in the camera. Oh, you can. All right. <laughs> all right. I ruined the trick. Do you know why you chose that? Because uh, you forced it on me. I don't know. <laughs> No, no, when I gave her the Sharpie and I showed it to you. Yeah. Um, just start, rub the logo, look at the logo. Oh, no, look at that. We it's see what it says? Seven of spades. Watch. David Blaine has levitated and performed many, quote, miracles on the streets of numerous cities. Eliminate another suit, not the suit of your card. Eliminate another one. Club. Club, eliminated. Look, I'm going to show you that I'm not kidding. Yours is a diamond, eliminated, watch. First I get rid of the spades, because you said those first. See how they start to just disappear? Then I get rid of the clubs. See how they start to disappear? Then I get rid of all the diamonds. See, the whole deck disappears, all except for what's left, the hearts plus your card. So sign it, sign, sign it. it. Yeah, yeah, put a signature on it, like a real signature, so I can't copy that. Great. Okay. It's good. Shake now hold on. Now to make sure I look to make sure I don't cheat. Okay. Can you hold my wrist? You can hold it. Yeah. All right. See now now I can't do any sleight of hand. Okay. So I take your card. Yeah. And I place it give or take about middle. Okay. Name a suit other than the suit of your card to eliminate. So not diamonds. Hearts. Hearts. Yeah. Okay. So look, if I squeeze the deck, see how I make the cards start to just disappear. See how the whole deck starts to vanish? Oh, you, Mac. See, every, <laughs> everything disappears except for hearts because it's the card that you signed. <laughs> and you can keep the... Are you kidding me? Here's the idea. Watch close. If I squeeze the deck, Jimmy, mm -hmm. see I make the cards start to vanish. See how all the cards start to just disappear? <laughs> See, everything disappears except for hearts because that's what she thought of, and of course... In his book, Mysterious Stranger, Blaine talks about a magic act he performed when he took a homeless man's cup of coffee. Blaine described the event, quote, holding it in both my hands, I muttered some weird incantations and the coffee in the cup turned into coins. Oh! oh. How did you do that oh. one? Oh, guys. That's, oh, that's your magic. <laughs> While visiting a prison in Louisiana, Blaine approached the prison door and bent the prison bars. You ready? There's no way you can bend them bars. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been here 25 years. I think he's been in like 33 years. Never seen the ball. Never seen the ball. I mean, we actually started getting the balls with his hand. I seen you bend that ball like, like that. I ain't never seen that happen. You've been up here all the time. I can cover the shit. Oh, that incredible hole. No problem at all. <laughs> How? How? I seen something amazing. With old TV, I ain't think that was real. I see it real now though. I don't finally see, wait, yeah, David Blaine, he real. In this clip, Blaine takes a lady's watch off her hand. Four, five, five, six, seven, eight, 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 nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, no, no, heart, heart diamond, heart diamond. <laughs> he then walks down the street to a jewelry store. I wanted to do something with the jewelry store always. <laughs> it's closed, so we can't... <laughs> <laughs> I used to, to imagine what would it be like if I could steal the, the stuff from the... <laughs> 
He then tells the lady to look at the display case. She looks closely and sees that it is her watch. She realizes that the watch is no longer on her hand. It's my watch! That is my watch! Is that really your watch? Uh, yes, it is. Blaine then puts his hand through the window to grab the watch that had been on her hand. Here, come closer, come closer, come closer. Look, watch this. If I reach like this, see that? I reach through the window, see that? He then moves his hand back through the window without any damage to the window or his hand. It's my watch. The newspaper has a hole. <laughs> well, look, the newspaper has a hole. Well, look, the window does. I don't get it. Amazing. See my hand? Amazing. I did. I did. That's so cool. And this is your watch. That's for real, right? <laughs> Blaine also promotes voodoo magic. And you remember the guys that used to do the voodoo? You might want to come in closer. Yeah, can you see this string? Look, I learned this in Haiti, actually. It's a voodoo thing. Yeah, magic has existed for thousands and thousands of years. Court jesters used to do it. Shamans would perform it. In Haiti, magic and voodoo are considered the same thing. David Blaine, Mysterious Stranger, quote, On our first night in Haiti, Abujo had arranged for us to film a voodoo ceremony. By the time the voodoo ceremony started, the temperature in that room had to be at least 120 degrees. Then I saw the human skulls and the full skeleton. The ceremony began and it was the most intense experience I'd ever had in my life. The heat, the music, the chanting, the stench of decaying flesh, it was otherworldly. People got up and drank some kind of potion and all of a sudden their eyes rolled back in their head. They broke into some weird ecstatic dance, and then they fell down in a trance. David Blaine quotes, Sometimes I'll pull a hair out of my head and place it on the drawing of my hand before the match is lit. It's a convincing touch for someone who believes in voodoo. In October 2017, Blaine did magic in Vienna for Peter Thiel's same-sex quote marriage to his quote boyfriend. After he emerged from being buried alive underground for a week in 1999, Blaine told the crowd, quote, I saw something very prophetic, a vision of every race, every religion, every age group banding together and that made all of this worthwhile. To promote different religions banding together is complete apostasy from God. Here is Blaine's promotional poster for this event. Notice that the underground looks like hell. Here is a Blaine promotional poster for his act of being trapped in a solid block of ice for three days. Notice how Blaine embedded a skull on his platform. Also notice the image of a demon or a soul in hell reaching out toward Blaine. There are also demonic faces right around his head. Here are some posters from another major event of Blaine. Notice the presence of demons. In 2002, Blaine stood atop a 100-foot pillar in the New York City area. The area for him to stand was less than two feet wide. He stood there for 35 hours straight with no safety net. I'm surprised he doesn't have a safety net on the bottom just in case he falls. The wind blows or rain or something, there's nothing down there. He completed the act wearing a hoodie with a dragon prominently featured on the front. Apocalypse 12 verse 9, quote, And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent who is called the devil and Satan who seduces the whole world. Let me try this. Let me, can I take this hat? You have something I can use as well? That's Just anything. Way. Like not a hat. Because what's that mean? Satine. Give me something to take though, something to grab with. Something just so I could take like this. Look, watch, look, look, look. If you reach in, right, make you pretend. Pretend you're reaching into the hat. No, no, but look, I make it seem like a snake. Apocalypse 20, verse 2, quote, The dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. It's just something I'd always wanted to do, which is part of an effect where you become a, it looks like a human dragon. Throughout his book, Mysterious Stranger, Blaine features pictures of dragons on the sides of the pages. 
He also features a picture of the devil or a demon in agony surrounded by flames many times in his book. He never explains why he is promoting this picture. On the title page for chapter 8 of his book, Blaine has a picture of himself. Look at the shadow. The shadow for Blaine has horns on its head. Blaine is clearly telling us that he is of the devil. People think, you know, that you signed some type of deal with the devil. <laughs> you notice, know right? Yeah, that's obviously no. People say funny things to me, but the devil one I got from a best friend recently, which is, I'm like, come on, man, you know me since we're kids. Here, Blaine admits that one of his best friends, whom he has known since childhood, has seen enough to recognize that Blaine's special abilities are accomplished by the devil and not by sleight of hand. Blaine has the look of demonic possession, a dark figure who, in his own words, produces works that are dark. Uh, I'm doing a one-man show in New York, which is a, an off-Broadway show that's going to be very dark and different than anything. Jesus says that those who are evil love darkness, walk in darkness, and are of the power of darkness. St. Paul also repeatedly describes the devil's power as that of darkness. Now watch, ready? Are you an illusionist? Are you a trickster? Uh, what is it? Are you a stuntman? What are you? How would you describe yourself? I'm just a showman. In one interview, Blaine flashed the eye of Horus marked on his hand. He said that it's his protection from death. Is this part of the show, this stare and the eyes and all that sort of thing? The eye and the hand. And what is that? What, what is the eye and the hand? Let's see that again. It's protection. Protection. What does that mean? Protection from death. Oh. Horus is an Egyptian false god that was worshipped by the Satanist Aleister Crowley. Crowley called himself the Beast 666 and was deeply involved in magic. The Eye of Horus was regarded by Crowley as the symbol of Satan. Crowley describes Satan as, quote, the Eye. Many magicians promote, feature, and mark themselves with the Eye of Horus, the mark of the devil. Also, take a close look at the pentagram, the five-pointed star used by Crowley. This pentagram, along with the inverted pentagram, are both symbols used by Satanists and witches. Here's a regular pentagram featured on a statue recently displayed by Satanists. This is the most famous magician in Japan, Cyril Takayama, known simply as Cyril. In this magic act, Cyril draws a pentagram using chalk. It's almost identical to the pentagram used by Crowley and other Satanists. Also notice the skull with a black star on his shirt. Cyril then puts the woman inside the circle and levitates her. Let go. Let go. Cyril was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. He then moved to Japan. He became fascinated by magic at around the age of seven when he was taken to a Las Vegas magic show. Notice that many of these top magicians got involved in magic at a very young age.
奇跡の瞬間をもう一度ダイヤの4から6になる要素がよくわかるなぜダイヤが増えたのかその答えは神の指先を持つセロのみぞし In this clip, a woman selects a card and places it among other cards in a life raft ring in a pool. Cyril then does a bungee jump from an extremely high area holding a sword. As he comes down, he stabs the card the woman selected and gives it to her. In the following clip, Cyril appears to change water into ice. Like many other magicians, Cyril has also worn shirts with skulls. Cyril also embraces religious indifferentism and he says differences are precious. It reminded me of all of our differences and how precious those differences truly are. Another wonderful day here in Rio. Until next time, love, peace, and happiness. In reviewing footage from the top magicians in the world, one discovers that they perform many of the same kinds of false miracles. This includes various magicians putting their bodies in positions in which they should fall over, but they don't. A spirit must be assisting them in order for them to do this. This is brilliant. Now just slowly let go and step back. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. In this false miracle, Cyril makes a card someone selected come out of the deck and stick to the window. He also puts it on the other side of the window. Chris Angel is one of the most famous magicians in history. Some believe he has already become the greatest magician of all time, surpassing even David Copperfield. Chris is the most watched magician in the history of the internet, and his magic show called Believe was the top selling magic production in the world. Believe took place in Las Vegas, also called, quote, Sin City. We are here in Sin City, Las Vegas. Chris sells a magic kit. It's the largest magic kit available in the world. It's out right now. Right from there, it's coming out in 50,000 stores. Chris started practicing magic as a child after begging his aunt to tell him how she did a card trick. Do you know that you can do that? Well, I started when I was uh, six years old. My Aunt Stella taught me my very first card trick. I became obsessed and passionate with the art of magic by the time I was 10. Started performing professionally when I was 13, 12, 13. And that's all I ever knew. In his book, Mind Free, Chris Angel said, quote, Once she shared the secret of the trick, I felt this incredible sense of power that an adult didn't understand how it worked, but I did. 
It was very enticing. I became extremely fascinated by magic. At age 14, Chris floated his mom on a broomstick. While Chris was heavily involved with magic, he also studied dance, the martial arts, quote, mysticism, and music. I grew up, you know, the MTV generation, and I was much more interested in music, you know, great bands like Led Zeppelin or the Beatles. Growing up, Chris was instrumental in starting two heavy metal music bands called Angel and Angel Dust. Referring to his time growing up, Chris said, quote, My greatest influences were MTV and music, Ozzy Osbourne, Elvis, Motley Crue. Those were the people I aspired to be like. Chris said that as a performer, he wanted to be like the Beatles, Kiss, and Madonna. Chris Angel, quote, Madonna is a tremendous example of someone who went to New York with a couple of dollars in her pocket and an enormous dream to conquer the world. She did whatever she had to do until she hit the big time. Chris Angel, quote, As I began to explore other personal influences, I found myself drawn to eccentric personalities like surreal artist Salvador Dali. Dali was addicted to fame and money. He innately understood that as an artist, garnering any type of reaction from his audience was the best way to seduce them and win their favor. Chris Angel, quote, I had to generate some noise to blow any of my competitors out of the water. To do that, I needed to be radical and hardcore. Chris Angel's official symbol is an A inside a circle. It's extremely similar to the universal symbol for anarchy. It's also somewhat similar to a pentagram, which is a star inside a circle. Chris's first major stage show was called Mind Freak. Chris had many major magic shows on national television. One of them was in 2003 on the sci-fi channel called Supernatural. Tonight, you will meet a man who will change the way you think about magic. Supernatural. The Mind Freak. Chris Angel. Supernatural. Chris's stage show, Believe, debuted at the Luxor Pyramid Hotel in Las Vegas on Halloween night 2008. Chris holds a Guinness World Record for making a hundred people disappear during a May 26, 2010 performance of Believe. From 2005 to 2010, Chris ran a series of national TV shows on A&E called Mind Freak. Mind Freak portrays a crawling demon following Chris around. Here is part of the official Mind Freak theme song sung by Chris Angel. In 2007, Chris authored a book called Mind Freak Secret Revelations, which appeared on the LA Times bestseller list. In 2013, Chris ran a series of national TV shows called Believe on Spike TV. In 2015, Chris started a new magic show called The Supernaturalist. Chris has described his magic empire by saying, quote, I've created a very large, sometimes scary beast of an operation. Chris speaks of when he went into business with his manager. He says, quote, we literally cut our hands, let the blood seep through and shook on our deal. Chris is a magician who has levitated, something that cannot be done without the assistance of a spirit or spirits. Chris has levitated on more than one occasion in front of live audiences. Chris says that all of his magic is performed live. He has also levitated above the Luxor Hotel, the pyramid where his magic show Believe was performed. Stand by. On other occasions, Chris has hypnotized people and then levitated them. You ever been hypnotized? No. 
Have you ever been hypnotized? Yes. Okay. We're going to try this with you. All right. That is so I don't know how to... I did not have a muscle control like that. She's totally out. Totally out. We're gonna try something that is gonna require a little bit of hypnosis. Just come over here for a second, and I want you to look at me. Chris has also levitated Shaquille O'Neal on more than one occasion. The second time Shaq was levitated, he was at Chris's house. Shaq is one of the biggest and best players in NBA history, standing 7'1 and weighing about 350 pounds. Shaq was levitated so high that he went over Chris's house. A small crowd was also there watching the event, including some quote celebrities. How in the world did Chris Angel get Shaq off the ground. How'd you do that? That's the most amazing thing I ever saw in my life. Here, Chris takes a randomly selected stuffed animal from a toy store and makes it appear to walk. One boy questions if there is a battery inside and Chris proves that there is no battery inside the stuffed animal. Ace of Spades. Yeah, Ace of Spades, that's a very popular card. I would just literally be able to flip out, boom, E. Ace of spades, you see that? Chris will even vanish right in front of people. I'm still here, watch. The volunteers in this magic act look underneath the blanket and discover that Chris has disappeared. All right, now you brought out here today Three forks. Right, actually we got them from the green room. You got them from, these are actual Fox News That's Channel true. issue That's true, I think it says four. Fox on the back. Yeah, no. Fox on the back, all right. And uh, you can do some, now I've messed with this fork. I'm so gonna try something. You are? Uh, I'll try something if you like. Yeah. All right, and you examine these, and uh, I'm just gonna, I'll play it to this camera right over here yeah, in front right. of me, all right? I'm just gonna take it, and I'm gonna shake it like this. And as I shake it, you'll see something start to happen right now, watch. Look, you see it going right there? Look. I'll show you one more time. You're gonna yeah, have to show you, me right? one Here more you go, watch. We'll right right, right watch it right very here. carefully. You'll see it happen right now. Look, it's starting to go. It's gonna start going right now. Look. Let me see this, the third one. <laughs> okay, this is a... Oh. Now, I can tell you, if you have a Heineken Premium Light beer, yeah. it looks a lot better. All right, now, <laughs> do that again. I shook it and nothing happened to it. Well, you, you got to get it. See, every, every fork says where it's made on the back. This yeah. is made in Japan, yeah. and it's, it's stainless steel. But if you just shake it like this and you get it just right, you can heat up the metal and it'll start to bend just like this. Watch, you'll see it go. You see that? Look. You want to explain that, Chris? Take one card, place it face down. Okay. Okay, and place the pack to the side. Now, it would be completely impossible or highly unlikely, let's just say, that our cards would match, correct? Almost impossible. But I, I have a sense of you because I've done the show a couple of times and I know how you think. What was the card that you selected? I'm going to move mine right over here. What was the card that you selected? Turn it over. It was the King of Clubs. The King of Clubs. And what was the card that I chose? Turn it over. Yeah. But turn it over, yeah. Well, leave the King Clubs there, turn it over, see if we have a map. We do. Right here. Pop. Okay. I know you're not gonna you're not gonna tell us how you do that. But I opened a blind a closed deck, you opened a closed yep. deck. I picked the card, you had nothing to do with me picking right. the card. And you, you never it. touched this deck. You never touched it. I took the card out of the deck. I put it face down. You took those cards in that deck and picked a card out of it and put it face down. Yeah. And this they were the same. 
thing. Now, Intuition? That would be, no. What I is don't. it? You're not psychic. No, I never claim to be. During this interview with Larry King, Chris is asked about pornographer Hugh Hefner. Chris says that he respects him, quote, for what he has accomplished. You know, I, I, I respect uh, him for what, his, what he's accomplished. Later, Chris shows a bracelet he's wearing. He says that it contains, quote, all different religions. Look at that watch. Nice Your watch. watch. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, show, show the, that's like an insane watch. <laughs> and is that real diamonds or custom? Uh, no, it's real. It's real. All right, and the rings. I don't. I, I just wore a couple, but <laughs> but everything has like a meaning. Like this says, "Love, love lives forever," and it has all different religions. In a different interview with Larry King, Chris is asked if he has faith. Chris responds, saying, "Quote: Yes, absolutely, I believe, and I tell people they should believe whatever that belief is, whether it is in themselves, in God, in what they are doing." In the next magic act, Chris hypnotizes a man and then tells him to, quote, become one with the vase. Just relax yourself. Now, listen to my voice. Keep your eyes closed. No, no, no. Be careful. Be careful. No. Open up your eyes. Now put your hands over your head. Hold that hold on to the vase. I'm going to balance this right on your head. Become one with the vase. Balance. Crap. Now listen oh. to my voice. Turn. Oh. Turn. Oh, wow. Turn. Wow. <laughs> Chris Angel claims to believe in God and says that he is very religious. He will frequently talk about how he's, quote, blessed. But as we can see, he fully accepts false religions. He has all different religions. He also practices voodoo magic using a voodoo doll. I believe in the voodoo sh Not really, but kind of sort of, I'm not sure. All right. Can you feel this? Yes! Yes! Yes, I did! Yes! I want you to take that pin and you can put it anywhere you like. Just face the voodoo doll. Okay. Wherever you want, I want you to poke it, okay? Stand forward, you just poke it wherever you want. Go! Oh. 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 Yeah! Ow! Notice the growling noises Chris makes during the following quote miracles. Tell me when you feel your hand get warm. It's getting warm now. It's getting really warm. Watch. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> Open your eyes up. Can I try something with your girlfriend? Just relax, she's fine. She's okay. Hold her. Just put your hands, palms up, facing up. Do not let go of her. She's fine. Got her? Hold her.
very slowly remove your hands. Step away. Chris has conducted seances on national TV in which he attempts to contact the spirit world. We headed over to the opera house for the dark seance. During this seance, Chris got possessed right on camera in front of witnesses. He flipped upside down and went up the wall. Everyone but the cameramen ran immediately out of the room. The volunteer in this next quote miracle seems to realize that Chris's magic is accomplished by the devil and shouts quote the devil in both Spanish and English. This is like the Houdini milk can, except I'm not going to get into watch. Be careful, be careful. Face the audience, okay? Now I want you just to relax, okay? okay. All right, you're going to go. Can you fit in there? Can you actually fit in? Come around, come around. I want you to put your hand on the lid. Watch. We're going to try something. We're going to try something right here. Now put your hand. Put your hand on top there. You kind of come. Now you just, are you in there? Just bang on that. Just push. You, now do it again. Let me hear you. Yeah. You are there, right? I'm here. Okay. Now watch. 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 Come over. Come over here. Ready? Now. Look. Right up there. In the next clip, Chris goes to a person's house and levitates on their sprinkler. But what's extremely interesting is what's on the hoodie he's wearing. The black hoodie has the devil's face on it with the words, quote, anti up. The term anti up usually means an offering or payment for something. Chris has worn this shirt on more than one occasion. This is a picture of the homepage of Chris Angel's official Twitter account taken on August 8, 2015. Notice the flames and Chris's official A symbol on the left and right. It looks like a depiction of hell. But as you look at the fire scene more closely, it gets even worse. That's because Chris placed his face in the center, directly in the midst of the flames. And if you don't think that it's Chris's face, here is the official image Chris uses of his face. As you can see, it's a perfect match. Chris's official cards have eyes on them and the eyes look like they're bleeding. It's interesting that Chris changed his last name to Angel. A few years ago, Chris Angel's magic show was officially called Believe. To call your magic show Believe is to present magic as a salvation message. It is to preach a false gospel. Chris will tell the crowd to yell out Believe during his shows as these clips from his shows in 2013 and 2014 demonstrate. All right, folks, let me hear you say Believe with me on the count of three. Let it marinate in your soul. One, two, three. In an LA Times interview on October 12, 2008, Chris Angel spoke about his stage show, Believe. Chris said, quote, this show is about my life. It's about the demons in my head, the good that's out there, the angels and love and lust, all that stuff mixed up. During the same interview, Chris said as someone whose business is, quote, lying to people, he is very controlling of his image. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 states that the deception of Satan and his agents comes quote in all power and signs and lying wonders. Notice that the Bible uses the word lying in regard to false signs and wonders that are worked through the power of the devil. They are lying signs and wonders because they are done through the power of the devil. Now take a close look at these ads and merchandise which promote Chris Angel's Believe Magic show and his Believe TV shows on Spike. Take a close look at the three letters that stand out. The three letters that stand out or are in caps are the letters L, I, and E, which gives you the word lie. This gives people another chance to recognize that Chris Angel's magic acts are lying signs and wonders performed by the devil. Let's now look at the Spike TV YouTube channel and Chris Angel's official YouTube channel. As you can see, L-I-E is in caps, meaning that Chris on his official page wanted it to be displayed this way. This is also how Chris uses it as a hashtag on his official Twitter account. As you can see in this August 27, 2015 screenshot taken of his profile area. It's how Believe is branded or marketed to the public, and Chris is closely involved with the way everything looks. I want to make sure that my vision is followed through in every particular step, so that when the public watches it, it's a true representation of what I wanted. I gotta be involved in every aspect. Every single thing in that show is Chris Angel. He stars in it, he develops the demonstrations. Even something as little as Chris's signature was so important to Chris, like how the signature looked. God allows these signs to reveal the truth that Chris Angel's quote miracles are lying signs and wonders performed through the power of the father of lies, the devil. In this store on Chris Angel's official website, chrisangel.com, Chris sells temporary tattoos so that his followers can mark their bodies with his image. Many of Chris's followers have marked their bodies with his picture and images. This shirt is described in Chris's store as Chris Angel's half skull face with angels whispering into each ear. Chris has also been photographed in public wearing this Egyptian pyramid shirt, and he sells similar shirts in his store. This one has the words, do the spirits come back? Chris also sells various secret society shirts in his official store. Chris Angel started his own secret society. One of the main links on chrisangel.com goes to his secret society page. It says, quote, you are about to enter the secret society and become an official member. Enter your secret society code found in your Chris Angel magic product. By becoming a member, you agree not to reveal any secrets. The future of magic is yours. Are you ready to become an official member? Chris Angel's official secret society symbol is shown. It contains the pyramid with the eye. Most tarot card decks typically have 78 different cards. Chris sells a shirt that promotes one particular tarot card, number 13 in Roman numerals. It is the death card. Anyone can look it up and verify that the number 13 tarot card represents death. Here, Chris wears a number 13 necklace in a video he uploaded to his Twitter account on August 24, 2015. During an interview, Chris was asked about what the number 13 signifies to him. Chris said, quote, the 13 is something that I prefer. Hi, this cave, there are cameras Every assure you that everything you see is exactly what you His watches that were watches that were gifts from Chris also wears a number 13 ring in addition to a pyramid with an eye ring and a skull ring. Chris sells many shirts that have a skull on them. And Chris, like many of the other top magicians in the world, very frequently wears shirts or clothing that have a skull on them. There, there it is. See, I, 
didn't even know where it was. In 2007, he told Cinema Blend, I got a call from the creator-producer of CSI, and he asked me if I was interested in participating. I said, yeah, provided I'm the killer. On January 19th, 2019, Chris opened a new show called Chris Angel Mind Freak in the newly renamed Chris Angel Theater at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. Here, Chris tells people to rip off their clothes if they want to. This is how it works. Now, I want you to remember this throughout the entire show. You give me lots of energy. Stand up, applaud, scream. That's amazing. Rip your damn clothes off. <laughs> in Luke 8:27, Jesus encounters a possessed man who was naked. Mark 5.15 indicates that another man, when he was possessed, went around unclothed. The reason that so many people today post pictures of themselves not properly clothed or naked is demonic possession or influence. And uh, I could just say, in this show, people freak out when I levitate. I mean, you see the audience's responses, you know, for yourself. But in the new show, when I levitate, random people in the audience will levitate. No BS. Wow. So you're saying that I could be sat next to somebody who could just suddenly take off. This is something that I wanted to do 20 years ago. As you enter Chris's new Planet Hollywood Theater, there is a quote from Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, the most famous rock song of all time. As some may know, the quote Chris has featured from Stairway to Heaven contains a satanic message when played backwards. Led Zeppelin is the biggest selling hard rock band of all time. The founder of the band was Jimmy Page. Page was extremely interested in the occult and magic. Quote, encountering his writings for the first time at age 11, Page immersed himself in Aleister Crowley's writings as a teen and young man. He began collecting rare magic books. He opened an occult bookstore in London called Equinox. Led Zeppelin's 1976 album called Presence features a family sitting around a table staring at a black obelisk. The obelisk is an occult symbol. However, I've, I've, I've read books and spent a lot of time reading books on uh, mysticism of uh, Eastern and Western traditions and, and, um, and uh, comparative religions. Um, and, uh, and then astrology, etc. Page's fascination with Crowley led many to believe he was into black magic himself. I think he was absolutely fascinated with the man and the knowledge of the will. I don't think, I mean, you know, he owned a lot of manuscripts and he, he bought the Inverness Castle. That was also Crowley's. And I think with it, he had purchased a lot of manuscripts. And at one point he had a bookstore in England, an occult bookstore. And he was really more fascinated by the knowledge of it. It was a sincere fascination and I think he took a lot out of it. He was very interested in those types of things, otherworldly things. By age 15, Jimmy Page had become a devout follower of occultist magician Aleister Crowley, who was dubbed the wickedest man in the world. But it wasn't until the release of Zeppelin III that Page revealed his interest in the dark side. In 1971, Page attended a Sotheby's auction by Crowley's estate, where he met filmmaker Kenneth Anger. The two become friendly. Page purchases Crowley's Bullockskeen house located on the shores of Loch Ness next to a graveyard. 
a house which was once a church that burned to the ground while the congregation was inside. Crowley's motto of do what thou wilt was inscribed on the vinyl of Led Zeppelin's album Led Zeppelin III. Jimmy Page was a collector of Aleister Crowley's memorabilia who, quote, had read a lot of Crowley and was fascinated by his ideas. Page encountered Crowley's writings at age 11 and later bought Crowley's home. Page said he believed Crowley's home would be a good atmosphere in which to write songs. Page did everything he could to return the house to how it would have looked during Crowley's ownership. Page commissioned an artist to paint some Crowley-esque murals on the walls. For a certain period of time, Page left the home in the care of his friend Malcolm Dent. Although Dent was a skeptic of the quote paranormal, he soon started to experience strange occurrences. After a few weeks, he heard strange rumblings from the hallway which stopped when he investigated, but resumed after he had closed the bedroom door. Den awoke one night to hear what sounded like a wild animal snorting and banging outside his bedroom door. It went on for some time and it was not until morning that Dent dared to open the bedroom door. When he did, there was nothing there. Dent added, quote, whatever was there was pure evil. Another friend who had stayed at the home awoke one night claiming she had been attacked by some kind of devil. There were other occurrences such as chairs switching places, doors slamming open and closed for no reason, and carpets and rugs rolling up inexplicably. Page's childhood friend Malcolm Dent stayed there for 20 years before Page sold the place. As he told the Inverness Courier in a 2006 interview, doors would be slamming all night. You'd go into a room and carpets and rugs would be piled up. Even though he's a self-described skeptic, Dent couldn't explain why any of this was happening. In 1975, he gave an interview to Rolling Stones magazine where he described some of the feelings he got from the haunted monument. When the interviewer went on to clarify that Page himself never had contact with the spirits, Page cut in with, I didn't say that. He went on to tell the interviewer that he preferred not to discuss the issue further. What happened in Crowley's home is similar to what happens in some cases of haunted houses. Some might wonder why a demon would reveal a spiritual world to people by opening and closing doors and making other noises. The demon has a calculated reason for repeatedly making these annoying noises. The demon knows that if these noises happen frequently enough, a person will get extremely frustrated. Then it becomes more likely that a person will call out to the unknown spirit asking the spirit what it wants. The person might interact with the spirit so that it will stop bothering him. Once he willingly interacts with the evil spirit, he becomes open to demonic possession. When I was in a room alone, it felt like I wasn't alone, like there was like a presence there, something I'd not experienced before. And through 1989, this presence got stronger and stronger and stronger until um, I sat on, um, on, on a bed in an empty hotel room in um, early 1990, actually March 1990. And I said out into the room, if there's something there, would you please contact me? Because you're driving me up the bloody wall. Also, you said on a show with Terry Wogan back in April 29, 1991, you said the, the, the challenge started off with you're the son of God. This home looks quiet from the outside, but owner Deanna Simpson says several ghosts are haunting it, and she's caught them in photos and recordings, including this one. The majority are bad, dark forces, unhuman. Just a couple of minutes into the interview, our photojournalist Nick felt his wrist burning. Are you okay? Did you get scratched? He was behind the camera, but Simpson knew what had happened right away. She took us on a tour of the house. She shot video of this door. If that is you, would you please shut that door? Oh my God. 
it appears to close on its own. And both Simpson and her cat have been pushed down these stairs before. So far in this house, Nick has been scratched. I've been touched and pinched. We've seen strange lights on the walls and heard noises, and we haven't even gone down to the basement yet. So where is the place where you saw the shadow man picture? This photo was taken with a deer camera in the basement. Uh, this picture right here is the shadow man. Um, he's about seven foot tall. Simpson says she's scared by what's happened, but she and her husband have lived in this home for seven years. Her grown daughters refuse to stay here. We put everything into this house, and we do want us move but we would have to list it at such a price to where we could recoup what we put in. Meanwhile, the family has invited mediums, researchers, and priests to visit the home. Some time ago in this Litchfield home, wife and mother Pat Redding felt as if she were possessed by evil spirits. She went through a series of 16 exorcisms, witnessed firsthand by her daughter, Michelle. When you see the person that you love being attacked by something invisible, so heinous and so disgusting, you will look for anything to stop it. The situation started, says Michelle, with strange banging noises in their home. It moved on to a mysterious overturning of all their furniture and eventually to attacks on Pat Redding from an invisible force. It would rip her hair out. There'd be plenty of witnesses and it would rip it right out of her scalp. An invisible force. She'd scream, she'd jerk backward, I'd turn around, she'd be in pain, of course she would panic, she'd cry, she was shocked. And did she have actual physical marks on her body? Absolutely. Yes. And they couldn't have been self-inflicted? No. Bite marks on her back. She would end up with black and blue marks in the most bizarre places that she wouldn't have been able to do herself. But how do you know that it's not uh, somebody with psychological problems? I mean, different psychological problems can manifest themselves in very strong Absolutely. ways. She um, uh, was found to have no psychosis. She, there was nothing wrong with her. Medically? Physically, everything had been ruled out. Exhausted. And, she, to, yeah. and to that point, that's when a decision had to be made. And that's when, yeah, actually, we had the Roman Catholic Church involved with it. Our brother who art in heaven, have it be thy name. Connecticut Bishop McKenna agreed to perform the exorcism, although it was not officially sanctioned by the Vatican. <laughs> Exorcists say it's the demons inside that give the possessed strange voices and unusual strength. They say that necessitated restraining Pat during her exorcism. Before this happened, did you believe in possession? Did you believe? No. Before this happened, we weren't your average middle class family. Then what do the two of you say to people out there watching this who I'm sure are thinking, these look like perfectly nice people. but. You cannot convince me your mom was possessed by demons. There's really no way to convince them unless they want to believe. But I knew my mother, and she didn't believe at all in that. And it existed. On March 20th, 2012, Jimmy Page released an album called Lucifer Rising and other soundtracks. It contained music that Page produced but never used for Kenneth Anger's film Lucifer Rising. Page subsequently committed to performing the musical score of Anger's film Lucifer Rising. Lucifer Rising began production in 1967 but was plagued by tragedy. A five-year-old boy named Goddard, cast to play the Lucifer child, leapt from his apartment window to his death. Bobby Boussoulet, cast to play the Lucifer teen, joined the Manson family and murdered school teacher Gary Hinman. On Jimmy Page's website, he says these music tracks, which were originally produced in the early 1970s, quote, have been revisited, remixed, and released for the first time. Page lists some of the tracks on the album titles like Lucifer Rising and Incubus. Incubus is considered to be the name of a demon. 
Many of the most well-known rock musicians in history were fans or had a devotion to the Satanist Crowley. According to Beatles drummer Ringo Starr, the cover of their Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club album showed people the Beatles liked and admired. This included the Satanist Aleister Crowley. The Doors had a picture of Crowley on their album cover. This is another top-rank magician who wears a skull on his shirt. His name is Franklin Saint. He has done things like bending objects without touching them. I'm not a hokey magician. I'm not pulling rabbits out of hats. There's no smoke and mirrors. I'm presenting something that defies logic, defies the laws of nature. That's crazy. I'm not using any type of gimmicks or props. I focus more on my energy and... He has said that it demonstrates supernatural ability. If you're wondering if you took the red pill, or the blue pill. And that was an open thing and now it's totally closed. And it was bent, and then he unbent it. Yes, that was supernatural. No gimmicks, no smoke and mirrors. After one of his performances, Franklin said, quote, I felt good. The energy was surging through my veins. How did it go? I felt good. You felt good? Yeah, I felt good. The energy was surging through my veins. I Former 33rd degree Freemason Manly P. Hall made a similar statement about energy surging through the hands. Hall said, quote, when the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. It's interesting that Hall uses the term dynamo. Dynamo happens to be the name used by Europe's most popular magician. But you know, being a true magician, a true dynamo, I use it to my advantage. Hall says that when a person has learned the proper application of the dynamo of living power, the seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands. Dynamo burned an image of his right hand into a display case at a store as people watched. Alright, do me a favor, hold your hands out like this. And just tell me if you feel the heat. Yeah. On numerous occasions, Dynamo has put solid objects right through his body. Just step, step back a little bit, and a little bit, like that. Right, and basically, on the count of three, I want you both to pull it as tight as you can, yeah? On the count of three, yeah? So one, two, three. In this clip, Dynamo asks a man to think of a music performer. Dynamo then changes the color of his shirt from red to black, imprinting an image of the music performer he was thinking of on the front of his shirt. Think of an artist right now. Mm. Music artist. Watch. <laughs> Where's the red shirt though? Oh, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> I'll give him another shuffle first. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm going to run my uh, my thumb down the side like this. Just say stop whenever okay. you like. Stop. Right there. Right there. Sure. That's yeah. good. Take the card. I'll turn around so I can't see it. Don't let him uh, show it to everybody. And don't let me see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
He got it, right? Cool, cool. I've seen it, I've seen it. Have you seen it? Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, keep okay, holding it. Don't let me see it. Hold it to your chest so I can't see it, right? Okay. Um, now, the sun has come out. It's amazing out here yeah, right now. Beautiful. But I feel a little bit uh, overdressed. <laughs> I'm wearing all black, you know. <laughs> it's my thing. So j just give me one second. Um, I want to I find this card, but South Africa style. Okay. South Africa yeah. style? Okay. Yeah, like this. Watch. And what? Whoa! Whoa! Come on! <laughs> Come on! That was a normal shirt. <laughs> oh, what? Oh! <laughs> Are you for real? Dynamo does many things, including bending his fingers in ways that are impossible without supernatural assistance. Stephen Frain, known to the world as the Magician Dynamo, started practicing magic at around the age of 12. He put some cards on a pool table and they just miraculously opened like it was some evil wizard. They just sprung open like that. And then my card flipped out. If he can do stuff like that, it's not right, is it? Eh? It was Dynamo's, quote, grandfather who advised him to learn magic as a way to protect himself from being bullied. I suppose the biggest influence I have comes from my grandpa. He wasn't a magician as such, he was just, he was a bit of a hustler. He's got this northern swagger, which I think I've kind of picked up in the years. You know, we both have this mentality, you know, being from Yorkshire, but you don't get out for now. You know, we kind of use our hustle to get where we want to be and get what we need in life. Dynamo's grandmother broke up with his biological grandfather and Dynamo began to call the man she started to live with his grandfather. His quote grandfather showed him some magic. In his book Nothing is Impossible, Dynamo said that after seeing one magic trick it felt like he had quote fallen under a spell. So um, did your grandpa himself, um, was he a magician? Did he do magic himself and go and show people? Or... Yeah he was, I wouldn't say he was a magician, he was more like a bit of a con artist, hustler, he, he... <laughs> Dynamo now has a tattoo of his, quote, grandfather on his neck and calls him his role model. His, quote, grandfather died a few years ago. Without him, without that support, I probably would never have been doing what I'm doing today. So I got a big respect for my grandpa and, you know, I actually have grandpa tattooed on my neck. After Dynamo started to show people at his school his new magic skills, he began to be accepted by his classmates. Dynamo said, quote, girls who had previously ignored me began to pay me some attention. It seemed the magic gave me the edge I'd been craving. I drank in the scene. I was popular for the first time in my life and that was an incredible feeling. I immersed myself in magic. I read every book I could get my hands on and practiced and practiced day after day and night after night. Magic literally became my world. In this interview, Dynamo said that magic, quote, gave me the power to bring people to me. It gave me an edge, something to make me unique. The only reason I stood out before was being the smallest kid in school. In another interview, Dynamo said, quote, magic became the one thing in life I could depend on, the one thing that would never let me down. Notice that Dynamo says magic, not God, was the one thing that would never let him down, a very telling statement. Jesus says, quote, and you shall love the Lord thy God with your whole heart and with your whole soul and with your whole mind and with your whole strength. This is the first commandment. Dynamo, speaking of magic, said, quote, you've got to put your heart and soul into it if you want to succeed at this game. Since the age of 12, magic had been my life. It was all I'd thought about all day, every day. Speaking of other magicians in his book, Dynamo says, quote, after Robert Houdin came the almighty Harry Houdini. To call a magician almighty is a blasphemy against God. Dynamo started his professional career in magic by working in clubs and bars in the UK. In the same interview mentioned earlier, Dynamo also talked about his friends. He said that they were into hip hop and were making DVDs of rapping and breakdancing. Dynamo said, quote, I thought I want to do what they're doing but with magic. The article then speaks of how Dynamo had a stomach abscess in which he had to spend six months in a hospital. 
Dynamo said, quote, I had a lot of time on my hands. I realized in there that if I had died, what would people remember me for? My magic was the one thing that would leave me a legacy. Dynamo, quote, if I had died, who would remember my name? What memorable things had I done in my life? I could have died a few days before and it struck me that if the worst had happened, that would be it. I'd have my friends and family at my funeral, but who else would care? What mark had I made on the world? Suddenly, a fierce determination roared inside me. I could either languish in this hospital bed or I could use this opportunity to do something, something big. I knew there and then that I had to make my mark before it was too late. Dynamo started suffering from Crohn's disease at the age of 13. Years later, his situation got so bad that half of his stomach had to be removed. One of the kind of setbacks that I got when I was growing up was I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was about 14, 15 years old, which ended up putting me in hospital for six months. And in that time, I nearly died. And that was the moment when I decided that when I got out of hospital, I want to do something to leave a legacy because if I'd have died in hospital then, what would people remember me for? Most likely that kid who got bullied at school. I decided I'm going to do whatever it is, whatever it takes to make a career in magic. You know, and I suppose that was probably the birth of Dynamo. When I was about 19 years old, that's when I really thought, you know, I had an idea that could actually potentially, you know, put me on a world stage. And I kind of put together this whole master plan. Dynamo said that he thought he might die. He has also openly said that he wanted to become famous and remembered throughout the world for magic. As previously mentioned, Dynamo started practicing magic at around the age of 12. After doing magic for some time, Dynamo probably came to realize that there were spirits or supernatural forces assisting him with his magic. I believe he came to understand that the devil was the one helping. Since he wanted to be famous in the world, I believe Dynamo decided to completely submit himself to the devil to get what he wanted. Here's an interesting clip from a man who said he heard that Dynamo worshipped the devil. But he had some sort of uh, difficulty in his life and um, he said that um, I mean, this guy obviously met Dynamo, I'm assuming, and he said, uh, or he, he knew, pe knew people who knew Dynamo, and he said yeah. that Dynamo basically said to whoever that, um, you know, he's going to, I guess his situation was so bad, Dynamo's situation was so bad that he, really, he his life sort of flashed in front of him. So he, he kind of said that, he said to people around him that, you know, I'm going to make something of myself, you know, see in a few weeks or a few months, I'm going to be famous worldwide or whatever, you know, just kind of bigging himself up a bit, you know. Um, saying that you know, trying to basically hype by himself, hype, and come yeah, back, you know, plan big bigger, things yeah. in the near future. And so he said that basically, I don't know how people how this got out, but he said that Dynamo either told people or people kind of um, observed it by Dynamo. Apparently, I, I I don't know if it's true or not, but he said that he um, uh, like went to live in the woods for a week, like uh, secluded himself and started worshiping the devil or worship something within the woods. And um, I don't know, he just kind of gets submit, submitted himself or something like that for a week or a month, I'm not sure exactly. And then when he came back, his career obviously blew up, apparently. But um, that's, happening. yeah, pretty much it. So basically, the, yeah, he he's went to the woods, started devil worship or something and came back out and so you became think a he's, big he's, megastar. But like, oh, he, okay, he, he kept talking about it. He was like, oh, you know, Dynamo said that he worshipped the devil and... Um, you know, he said that he was going to become a success, and he did after after coming out of the seclusion period. So, so he went to live in the woods. Yeah, he said he apparently stayed in the woods or secluded himself somewhere in the woods. And again, this is not something that I ver I can verify. It's not my information. It's not so. It's not meant to defame anyone or whatever. Yeah, it's just something that I've heard. Well, I'm not sure if it's true. It could be fake. I mean, but, I mean, see, Dynamo, is, Dynamo is. I mean, some of his tricks do seem like pretty unexplainable yeah and but I'm, but I'm not the kind of guy that you know I'm, I'm a pretty skeptical guy i like to question everything a lot this is a magician who openly states on his youtube channel that he makes contracts with different demons for special powers the demonic circle 
a symbol of great power, used through most of my career as a black magician. And I have the symbols of the various packs that I've made with demons throughout my workings as I have walked my own path of embracing the darkness. Now, Lucifer Drophical is one of those shadowy figures in occult lore who intrigues and confuses at the same time. Lucifuge appears in the Grand Grimoire as not just a demon to make a pact with, but as the demon to call when you're going to make a pact. I've heard the name Lucifuge several times. Not once has he ever been spoken of lightly or happily, but always in whispers and followed by warnings. Do not work with this demon. He's too powerful, too evil, too hot for any magician to handle. Of course, such words of warning have always served to stimulate my interest even more. And so, I began to work with this demon. 33rd degree Freemason Manly P. Hall admitted that throughout history magicians have sold their souls to the devil, and in return they receive special powers during their short time on earth. In his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, Hall said about magicians, quote, by means of the secret processes of ceremonial magic, it is possible to contact these invisible creatures and gain their help in some human undertaking. It is possible to make contracts with spirits whereby the magician becomes for a stipulated time the master of an elemental being. True black magic is performed with the aid of a demoniacal spirit who serves the sorcerer for the length of his earthly life with the understanding that after death the magician shall become the servant of his own demon. For this reason a black magician will go to inconceivable ends to prolong his physical life, since there is nothing for him beyond the grave. A man will barter his eternal soul for temporal power and down through the ages a mysterious process has been evolved, which actually enables him to make this exchange. I believe this is what happened with Dynamo. This is the real secret to his sudden success. They say a magician should never reveal his secrets. But sometimes the secret is where the magic lies. Oh. Dynamo is the yeah. devil! You're the devil! This is a Fiat Auto commercial officially called, quote, Dynamo Unleashing the Power of X. Dynamo stands in front of a black box and begins to open it. Interestingly, in Greek mythology there is a box called Pandora's Box which contained all the world's evils. Is Dynamo opening a symbolic Pandora's Box? Change perspective. Our true potential is unleashed. Are you ready to see the world in a new light? Dynamo probably figured out that the fastest and easiest way to rise to the top of the world in magic is to give himself completely to the devil. In one way or another, I believe he did that, and in return, he might be the fastest growing magician in the world. In this next clip, Dynamo says, quote, Talk of a devil, and he will appear. Talk of a devil, and he will appear. Right after he says this, Dynamo appears in front of a group of women sitting at a table. He seems to be referring to himself as a devil. Dynamo asks his grandmother if she is coming to his show. She says yes, and he responds, wicked. All right. Are you going to come to the show as well, Mama? Oh, definitely, yes, definitely. If God spares me, I'll be there. <laughs> wicked. All right, we'll see you then. Some might find it difficult to believe that Dynamo would worship or submit himself to the devil for fame, fortune, or special abilities. So now, now that we warmed up a little bit, I want to show you how to win the lottery. It's a technique I use that I call um, cheating. 
but consider that he is a complete pagan and completely accepts all kinds of grave sins. So if you are homosexual out there and you're afraid of coming out, don't be afraid because we'll welcome you with open arms, won't we? Because we've all got loving in our, in our yeah. hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter what creed, flavour, anything you are, we're all humans and we're in this together. Because key Together. On this particular evening, we were on our way to a nightclub. When we were younger, it was always tough getting into places. The bouncers would always hassle us, and I used to perform just to get us through the door. Now, things are different. You can get grown men brought to tears, but then on the other extreme, you can get women fainting. Sometimes you get women throwing themselves at me, you know, which is kind of cool. Do you ever use your powers for evil, i.e. seducing women? <laughs> I don't really think I need to use my magic to no. seduce the women. I think I might do alright. Women like the magic, I like the women. Um, we're gonna go to the big smoke of London. You know it. You bought the condoms? Yeah. I'm in the studio of Ian Brown, yeah? Absolute legend. He's seen everything. He's lived it, you know, the life of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You join Miami though, right? It's awesome. Like, you know, in England right now, mm -hmm. it's rainy. Yeah. There's no girls walking around in bikinis. No. Dynamo quote, you can have the best time of your life in LA. One minute you can be chilling by a hotel pool surrounded by superstars. The next you're averting your eyes as half naked ladies run about at pool parties. It's a ridiculous city in many ways and I absolutely love it. The craziest parties every night and my feet barely touched the ground as I went from one glamorous party to the next. Also consider the statements already covered in which Dynamo openly admits that his goal in life was to become famous through magic. When I get out of hospital, I want to do something to leave a legacy because if I had died in hospital then, what would people remember me for? I decided I'm going to do whatever it is, whatever it takes to make a career in magic. You know, and I suppose that was probably the birth of Dynamo. Um, but I think my main thing which is, you know, which I kind of decided when I was in hospital many years ago, before I had the operation, when I nearly died, that I wanted to, if I had died then, would people remember me? You know, I wanted to leave a legacy behind. And for me, the only way to leave that legacy was through magic. We also know for a fact that Dynamo is open to worshipping spirits, for he promotes and believes in voodoo. Voodoo involves the worship of spirits and elements of nature. Do you guys believe in voodoo? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yes, no. Yeah? No, let, let go there. Hold it at the top. Like me, yeah? This is like voodoo, yeah? I'm going to take the glass that smashed over there already. Watch. Just give it... Mind out. Give it a little shake. Ring it like a bell. Now stop. Dynamo, speaking of New Orleans, says, quote, I think it's one of the most amazing places I've ever been to. New Orleans is a very magical, mystical city. Voodoo has been a part of New Orleans for over two centuries. Dynamo's 2013 autobiography is called Nothing is Impossible. This is a picture of the book signed by Dynamo. Notice that Dynamo marks his signature directly on his forehead. The Bible says that those who are marked by the beast receive a mark on their right hand or forehead. Mike Super is another top-ranked magician in America. Many years ago, NBC searched for the top 10 quote mentalists in the world, and Mike was voted the winner of the NBC TV show Phenomenon. In this clip, a person on stage randomly selects a time and Mike makes that time appear on the right hand of everyone in the audience. Concentrate on my hand, focus here. Take a deep breath in, and it's done. You have been blinded. Mike has also been a finalist on NBC's America's Got Talent. 
Tonight, I'm going to be doing this completely in the blind. We're going to raise a cloth as you shuffle. Good. Now, I want the cameraman to come in tight. Now, go ahead and cover me up. Three, two, one. I delivered you a prediction yesterday. You have it and have guarded it, yes? I have it. Tear it open for me, please. It's going to be important later. Shuffle those cards as best as you can. Feel out eight cards face down in front of the stand. One at a time, go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay. We took up a random offering tonight from random audience members' bills. I want you to each take a look. Each serial number is different. That's going to be important, all right? Now, I'm going to throw you into this booth along with this money. Nick, what? step into the cash booth. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to make it rain on you, Nick. Hey, man! Those Hold bills on. have traveled around the world. This is a global prediction. Nick, pick one quickly for your own safety. He's got it. Now, keep that in full view, Nick. Keep it in full view. Good. Now, step on out. Step on out. That was awful. That was all right. You did great. Walk to the camera. I don't want to touch it just yet. Don't let go of it, but I want you to turn it. Okay. I don't want people to think I'm switching the bill. Out of all of the random bills that could have ended up here tonight, right. you selected this one. Yes. Yes. I'm going to ask you to read just the first digit. Forget about the letters. The first digit. Okay. Seven. Seven. Check it out. One of the cards. Oh. Seven. Oh. Keep going. Five. Faster. Yes. Oh, no. Six. Yes. Wow. One. Yes. Three. Yes. Seven. Seven. Four. Four. Five. Five. <laughs> An exact match. Uh -uh. But wait. Howard, this bill could have been anywhere yesterday. It ended up here tonight. I gave you that prediction in advance. Take it out. Take it out. Now, You'll notice it's in code. I'm going to set the bill right there. All right, it is lit. Now watch. Go ahead. I want you to get a tight shot there. I gave you this days ago. I want you to see how that literally magically changes. It's doing it slowly because the butane torch doesn't want to light. I know. Yes. <laughs> Proving that this is a live show. Now, Howard, check it out. If I go all the way. Wow. There it is. Seven. In advance. There it is. Seven. seven, five, six, one, three, seven, four, five. A global prediction. Look at you. Look at you. Mike says he's able to perform his magic through a spirit he has known since his childhood named Desmond. The spirit introduced itself to Mike when he was a child when it wrote its name supernaturally on a chalkboard over and over again. In my childhood, I had a supernatural spirit attached to me. His name is Desmond. And to this day, I don't know exactly what it is. Some people have called it an angel. Some people have called it a spirit. He's a big reason that I'm, I'm doing the show tonight. I'm going to introduce America to Desmond. Desmond. Desmond came to me when I was about six years old. I had a chalkboard where he would write, I am Desmond. This kept happening until one day I just said, uh, hello Desmond, and it stopped. And then other things started to happen. Working with a spirit energy comes with challenges because there's no control. So if Desmond doesn't show up, there's literally no act. Desmond has to show up. I can understand why you say that, yes. Uh, he's my spirit energy uh, that I've sort of had a little communication with uh, throughout my life. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make magic something that was interactive. I wanted the audience to experience it firsthand. Mike's, quote, interactive magic includes having his, quote, spirit friend, Desmond, possess others. Whatever I do to this doll, Desmond is going to make you feel. So I need you to sit up straight, close your eyes. Easy. Good. What well, does that mean? I've placed Good. Desmond inside of you, Mel. Mike does magic using his voodoo doll and sells autographed items promoting voodoo magic. 
Well, thank you, everyone. Tonight, we're going to delve into a supernatural world, an ancient religion of voodoo. Uh -oh. <laughs> I have brought with me my voodoo doll. My need to know, do you believe in voodoo magic? Andy, you let them know when you feel it, man. You let them, <laughs> let them know. <laughs> Even though Mike promotes and practices voodoo in this 2014 interview, he claims to be a Christian. Incredible. Mike goes on to speak about who Desmond might be. Quote, I just quit trying to figure it out, Mike says laughing. It's always been a part of my life. So Mike still doesn't know what Desmond is, and he has given up trying to figure it out. Again, the name of the spirit that enables Mike to do all his magic calls itself Desmond. If you simply drop the S and the D in Desmond's name, you find out what Desmond really is, demon. It is only through a demon that real supernatural magic takes place. Matt Franco was the 2014 winner of the national TV show America's Got Talent. He was the first magician to ever win the show, beating out nearly 100,000 acts. He won a million dollars. Howie, you and, you and I haven't prearranged anything? Nothing. I don't claim to be an artist, okay. but I'm gonna try to paint a picture for you. All of you, right now. Watch. Oh, wow. It's me. It is. Watch. That is it. Mel B, for the first time ever, what was the card you thought of? Go ahead, say it. Seven of the hearts. The seven of hearts. Wow. Oh! Awesome. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Speechless. Wow. Matt says he has been obsessed with magic starting from the age of four. My name is Matt Franco, I'm 26 years old, and I can do magic. I am the biggest magic nerd you're gonna meet. I think my brain might be an encyclopedia of magic. It's just a complete obsession for me. And it has been since I was four years old. Well, that's not how it's done. Oh no, now I know, Matt. I still don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing magic since before I could read. I was obsessed with those magic specials growing up on TV. Those were my Bible. It was something I saw on TV when I was about four years old, was just completely inspired by it. Right. That was it. I was done. That's what I wanted to do. So it's crazy to think now that could be me inspiring kids to do magic. That's an amazing thing. So I have like two copies, uh, at least, of every magic show that has ever been on television. I saw magic on TV when I was about four years old and just decided I was gonna stick with it. I fell in love, and uh, here we are. Next Do you remember now. who it was that you saw? No, I was too young to even know, mm -hmm. so I don't know who I was watching. Maybe it was a David Copperfield special on CBS. Really. It was one yeah. of those specials with a bunch of magicians on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, okay. So I don't know who it was or why I was watching it, but we were tuned in. Next yeah. thing I know, I'm begging my parents to get me a magic set, and I'm doing it in kindergarten for show and tell. <laughs> Watch, watch, watch. Two of spades, okay, we're getting nice and tight on that. I'm gonna leave that right there. Take your other hand and cover it for me. Okay. okay. Perfect. I'm gonna try to pull it out without you feeling it. Keep it tight, okay? Okay, tight. I want you to resist. That's not it, right? This is the jack of diamonds. Right, right. Watch the jack, ready? One, two, watch the jack. No, <gasps> no. Open your hand, look. No! No way! Blinker, you'll okay, miss okay. it, ready, look. Oh. Visualize your card right there. <gasps> what? <laughs> What? Oh my goodness. No! No! no. Stop it! Out. Watch the King of Clubs. I'm going to okay. do this really slow. On okay. your hand, take your other hand, cover it. Okay. All right, now yours was what? Um, eight of hearts. Watch the eight of hearts. Ready? Don't blink. One, two, watch the eight. Oh Whoa. no. And you did not move your hand. Open at your hand, all. look. I don't want to do this. Come Turn on, it over. Show it. the camera. No. No. Check it out. <laughs> no way! Here is a young magician that can make CDs instantly appear. He will also change their size, shape, and color. Notice that the magic show he performs on is blasphemously called, quote, God Hands 2.
This is a lady from Brazil who levitates. She is unlike other street performers who appear to levitate but do not actually levitate. This woman simply walks up to a certain area in full view of others and begins to levitate. Some might argue that she is able to hold her body weight up with her cane. But that argument fails because she removes her hands completely from the cane and still levitates. In some instances, she will switch hands. This is unlike other street performers who appear to levitate. Their arm or one side of their body remains connected to a metal box underneath. Those street performers are hooked up to a contraption that allows them to appear as if they are floating. Also, anyone can watch those street performers and see that at the beginning of the day, they assemble their device. And at the end of the day, they disassemble their device. The fact that those performers are not actually levitating can be discovered by anyone who waits until the end of the day to see their contraption disassembled. But this woman from Brazil walks right up to the crowds and begins to levitate. She is not hooked up to any device. While floating, she will switch the hand that holds the cane and even take both hands off the cane. A human who is not using a machine or a device is not able to float in the air without spiritual assistance. Jin Lim is a famous American magician. Growing up, it was his desire to become a professional piano player, but at college he developed carpal tunnel syndrome in both hands. He then decided to become a professional magician, and in only a few years he has already become one of the top magicians in the world. He can cause things to instantly appear and disappear. All right, watch. Once more, you can actually see the coin vanish and then reappear. Watch. Once more. Up. We'll do it again, but this time with a deck of cards. Whoa. Shin is the only two-time winner on America's Got Talent, winning in consecutive years Season 13 in 2018 and America's Got Talent, the champions in 2019. 
In this clip, Shin Lim says that he uses black art to perform his quote tricks. You know, some of you guys are thinking it's it's CGI or editing. Excuse me, if you don't know any of my work, uh, I use black art, which we all know. One of the definitions for black art is witchcraft. This video on the life of Shin Lim quotes Shin saying, this was so amazing, like I can learn sorcery. As he started to improve his skills and develop his own tricks, Lim had a revelation. This was so amazing, like I can learn sorcery, says Lim. One of Shin Lim's friends is a card magician whom Shin calls sexy and says don't tell his wife Casey. He's so sexy. Don't tell, don't tell Casey I said that. Shin Lim got his own show at the Mirage in Las Vegas. On the show, he works with world-famous Scottish mentalist magician Colin Cloud. Here, Shin and Colin talk about those who believe that the judges or audience members are paid actors in on their magic acts or that their magic is done with CGI. They're not like, like, like what these shows just like, you know, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's really, it's really wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it's funny people saying, yeah, but well, you must use stooges or the judges or anyway. Oh, yeah. And the truth is, genuinely, we can all, like, in our shows on TV, like, nobody's in on it. And like, I used to get really upset when I first started doing AGT. I was on season 12 and people saying, oh, he's using stooges or plants or they're all actors. Or yeah. And to start, I was like, oh, this is really upsetting. Yeah. And then you realize, actually, if that's the only way that you can think. It's a compliment. Done, I'm like, it's a compliment. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people say the same thing about them. They're exactly. Like, it's edits, it's CGI. I'm like, Bro, this was recorded live, man. How can it be CGI? Yeah, like, <laughs> like there's oh, no way. But, yeah, um, it, it, I mean, genuinely, if we were using Stooges or camera tricks, like <laughs> for the show, <laughs> we we would. I'd be disappointed with myself. Like, cool. hand on heart, can honestly say we don't use Stooges, Same. and because of that, I recommend you come and see the show at the Mirage two or three times. Yeah. Uh, so, so that, that, that way you can see that we don't. Use every any night, different. it's different people. It's, different. You know, everything happens raw, as you said. It's yeah. different. Um, but yeah, I now take that, as you said, as a compliment. Yeah, so, you have to, exactly. So, people that think we do that, then. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. And keep saying. Honored. Yeah. <laughs> Shin Lim's friend Colin Cloud joined a company called Tree of Knowledge in 2007. The tree of knowledge of good and evil in the book of Genesis is the one tree that God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from, otherwise, they would die. Under the form of the serpent, the devil deceived Eve to eat the fruit from this tree. He lied to her, assuring her that she wouldn't die, but would be as God. This is Colin's featured image for his Twitter account on July 23, 2019. His featured tweet says, Sinful. The message describes his 2019 show called Sinful. About this show, Colin says, quote, warning, not for the faint-hearted, just the dark-hearted. He closes his statement with a picture of a demon or the devil. Colin also promotes as hashtags the words sin, sinner, devil, Satan, and Lucifer. Here are some quotes about his show Sinful from his website, colincloud.com. Some sins are deadly, some are delicious. In Sinful, Cloud will charm the demons in your head. Colin will reveal why it's so much more fun to ask for forgiveness than permission, and why enough is never enough. Colin will explore your psyche and show why you are driven by desire. Get ready to discover why you are sinful and proud of it. This Edinburgh Festival let Colin Cloud find out exactly how original your sins can be. He might even indulge in a few delicious sins of his own. One promotional features just an apple. That's obviously a reference to eating or taking a bite out of the forbidden fruit. In this poster promoting sinful, Colin Cloud features a tattoo of a serpent on his right hand. Chloe Crawford was Colin's special guest magician. Crawford tours as a magician and has been featured on the magic show The Illusionist as, quote, the sorceress. Colin Cloud's July 25, 2019 tweet says, Retweet for evil. During an online YouTube video show, a blindfolded man tries to guess who Colin is and he guesses that he is a porn star. Colin responds, quote, I wish. Ask other yeah, questions. Was in Vegas. Yeah, was in Vegas. You're a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, I 
The magician who calls herself the Sacred Rihanna was the winner of Asia's Got Talent 2017. She has described herself as, quote, we. The Sacred Rihanna, after that performance, which the judges have all agreed was amazing, how do you feel? We are happy. In Mark 5, 9, Jesus asks the unclean spirit possessing a man what his name is, and the demon responds, quote, My name is Legion, for we are many. Throughout history, men and women have sold their souls to the devil for temporal benefits. Here are shirts for sale that promote or encourage children to sell their souls to the devil or make deals with the devil. Here are some I sold my soul to Crowley shirts for sale. Here's a shirt for sale that promotes child ritual sacrifice. Here's another shirt for sale that promotes summoning demons. There are people on YouTube who have openly sold their souls to the devil. What's up, guys? Back with another one. As you tell by the title, yes, today I'm gonna sell my soul to the devil for fame and fortune, guys. I don't know. It's sort of weird, guys. I'm not saying I believe in selling your soul and all that kind of stuff, but I'm gonna give it a chance, all right, guys? So today's the day, guys. I'm selling my soul. Why hide it, guys? Like, why not just be open with it? Hey, if it works, you guys are gonna know for sure that this stuff is actually existing in the universe. And if it doesn't work, well, you know that it's all bull. All right, guys, so believe it or not, this video took a lot of preparation. Like, seriously, I took three days to prepare for this. And it's all in this book right here, guys. It's called Gems from the Equinox by Aleister Crowley. So in this book, you can tell right away it's real just because of the Egyptian stuff all over the place, guys. But basically, this book has a lot of things to do with selling your soul, guys. Also, it has a lot to do with black magic and all that kind of stuff, guys. But before we start this, guys, I just want to let you know that in no way am I condoning people to do this. Like, do not do this. I don't know if it works, guys. I don't know if it works. I've been sort of like the test dummy for like demonic rituals on my channel for a while now. So if any Everybody's gonna understand it's gonna be you guys all right so please don't hate on the video guys another thing I believe in God all right I don't believe in Satan I don't worship Satan all right no matter what kind of tattoos I got for real I believe in God all right so I don't want to hear all this devil worshiping stuff guys it's just a video man I'm just trying it out bro let's see if it works dude like literally I want to be a youtuber more than anything why not sell my soul why not like that's what I want to do if I can't do this I just want to die okay like literally I want to do this more than anything Thing, all right, so let's just get that understood. All right, and if it don't work look I'm still trying YouTube anyways. All right 13 candles guys. I got 13 blue candles I got this Ouija board thing right here. It's really cool so We're gonna make a pentagram with this salt basically a pentagram is just a big star with a circle around it guys and Basically, I do like demonic rituals at 3 o'clock in the morning guys I got my whole channel full of that stuff and trust me after doing this for months I definitely believe in demonic spirits and presences and it's scary I'm not gonna lie guys. This is scary. I'm really scared to do this. I recommend not to try it Do not try it at home. This is my disclaimer right now. Don't try this. All right guys So I learned a lot from this book lately guys I read this whole entire thing in the last three days and what I came to Understand was the afterlife the spiritual realm. It has a lot to do with patterns Numbers life is really like a video game guys And if you guys have ever played a video game before you know that there's hacks and there's cheats You might press up down left right a B and if you press these all in the same order all at the same time all in the proper place in the game Something magic will happen your character will get superpowers You'll be able to slow time and do all this crazy stuff and life is a lot like this from what I understand Everybody knows all these celebrities. They sold their soul. All right now. It's my turn. All right. Where's my dream? Where's my money at? I'm still in a freaking one-bedroom apartment, guys. It's time to step it up a notch. I also writ out the contract, guys. All right, guys, so here is where it gets real. I have to sit in this pentagram for as long as it takes, guys, and I have to chant. I'm already feeling like a cold wind on me. I'm really scared. I'm actually shivering right now all of a sudden. I don't know why. But yeah, guys, um, I'm really scared, so I'm just gonna sit here and chant. I'm not a devil worshiper. I'm just doing this for the whole purpose of the ritual and making this video pretty much for like documentation reasons like does this actually exist like someone has to do a test like it's gonna be me all right I'm gonna test it out apparently after chanting this I'm gonna start to feel the presence of a demon and once I start to feel that presence 
I have to cut my thumb or any part of my hand and basically just stick it right here underneath my name. I gotta stop explaining this to you guys and just go on with this whole thing. Whoa, guys. Okay, I'm feeling the presence already, guys. I seriously feel the presence. I don't know if you guys can see this. Like, I got serious goosebumps. Wow. Guys, I'm so scared. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and sign this thing, guys, because like I said, I feel the presence already. So I'm not gonna show you, but I'm taking the scissors and I'm gonna sign this thing. Just like I told you guys. All right. All right, there it goes, guys. Officially sold my soul right now. In one year, this should be all delivered, guys. I'm just gonna blow this out real quick because I'm scared. I really did feel the presence of a demon guys like I can't fake goosebumps on my body like I'm sorry I really can't fake that you're gonna have to take my word guys like I did this a hundred percent like I closed my window So no light would come in this room for three days like I seriously want this to work or I, I, I don't want to sell my soul to see basically But I did I'm actually reading a real script um, seance. seance script that was wrote up back in the day and this is how people would sell their soul to the devil so we, we are doing this the legitimate way. Now, again, the outcome, I don't know how that's gonna go. Um, I don't believe anything bad will happen, but everything we're doing is according to, I don't wanna say the book because it's not a book, but it's, it's, a, it's the way that it has been done in the past. Let us know what you think. My name is Jake Weber, and I'm going to make a deal with the devil. This deal is called the Crossroads Ritual. I will be handing over my soul in exchange for whatever I ask for. And I'm going to be doing this on Halloween night. If there are people who will come out and tell the whole world that they are selling their souls to the devil, how many more people do you think have privately sold their souls? Hello, my name is Jabrizi, the new Jesus. I've been called the devil. I've been called God. I'm the hip hop illusionist and I'm ushering in a new era of magic. At the age of 13, I got diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So I wasn't able to go outside for about a good two years. So I said, if I get one more chance, I want to do magic because I want to make my impact on this world. One of Jabrizi's videos is called Magician Really Sells His Soul. Did I sell my soul? A common question I'm asked. Let's find out the truth. So to answer that question, yes, I did sell my soul to do magic. Soul. I'm a magician hitting the streets and doing magic becoming this generation's best magician alive. In this video, Jabrizi puts up a graphic multiple times in which the two words sold and soul can be spelled out. In other words, he is telling you that he sold his soul. Jabrizi doesn't say he sold his soul to the devil but claims to have given his life completely to magic. But after the sold, soul title appears, he says he is, quote, becoming this generation's best magician alive and gives the devil's horn symbol with both of his hands. This clearly indicates to those who understand the hand symbol that he gives credit to the devil for what is happening in his life and that he did sell his soul to the devil for magic powers. I showcase a legendary journey like no other. My mission to wake up as many people as possible to their own strength. Although all magicians who have special powers are possessed, whether they know it or not, not all magicians have explicitly sold their souls to the devil, but there are many magicians who have. The evidence indicates that Jabrizi is a magician who did sell his soul to the devil. Do not tell me what to do at all. Like, I'm not gonna listen. Like, I do whatever I want. 
I want to be literally the most influential person alive, Ooh. I believe. I don't even think, I, I think I'm bigger than the idea of magic. I am magic. These are like my pimp shoes now. <laughs> so to get this started off the right way, I'm gonna do a magic trick to some ladies, man, because I'm a ladies, man. And the first trick is gonna be with the condom. Wait, let the camera get close in on this. Check it out, watch. Watch the condom. If the pin is here, then that must mean that the pencil is here. Watch this. If the pencil is here, then that must mean that the pin is. Um, oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Look at him there, okay? You do witchcraft? <laughs> Oz Perlman might be the most well-known mentalist magician in America. After stunning some radio show hosts, one of them asks Oz if he works with the dark arts. Oz responds, quote, I sold my soul. I'm so How? How? I don't like, 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 Stay away from my mom. I need to go take a bath. <laughs> How do you know my mother? <laughs> stay away from my mom. I my, told, I, I, like my my heart is beating quickly. Didn't you notice I was I was sweating and shaking over here? I think I'm sweating. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. Something's wrong. Is there to, you in the dark arts? <laughs> I, I sold my soul. <laughs> Here Oz does a quote trick and says quote seems evil and then says quote evil. If you wouldn't mind strike a match. You know, Ooh, this is so fun. And fire. Oh, God. Now wait, wait, don't move because I said water. Come back, Chanel. Come back, Chanel. And. <gasps> I thought you were about to drop flames. She's like, what's about to The craziest thing, there wow. was a study where they did this. Freezing, by the way. Seems evil. Yeah, you nice. can drop it. Now, that's the thing. It feels cold, right? It does. Where they did a study where they took a match and wow. they conditioned somebody that they were going to burn them. Evil. But where great. did the ice come from? That's, I know. They're all like over. Al's full wet. of it. I know. Frisk wet. me to see if I'm wet right now. That's no, what I'm, I'm saying. Kidding. Nothing's wet. Al, stop. That's what I was going to wow. say. That's amazing. She said, I want you to think back. Hear me out. My name is Oz Perlman. I live in New York City and I'm a professional mentalist. First audition at America's Got Talent, I did something from LB. I am picturing a vacation to Fiji that Yay! happened in 1998. To say she was freaked out was an understatement. I think she was about to throw holy water at me. The dream is getting to the NBA, baby. That's the dream. Trey. Yeah. 30 cards, yep. name the teams. Every single one of these are different. Make sure all the NBA teams are They're all there, I'm seeing them all. Players, say them, say them. New Same Orleans, Denver Nuggets, Nuggets okay. Sacramento Mike, Kings, are all the there. the cards, okay. and this is important. Game time decision. I, I want you to slide I don't know into your hand a certain amount. Could be half, could be less. One in each hand, take a group in each hand. You ready? You decide. This is all you throw one of them over your shoulder. Get rid of one oh, half. Oh, oh. Gone. I don't care. I don't okay. want them. Gone. Spread the other ones between your hands. Decide whether you want a big group, small group, right in the middle. Spread them out in your hands. Either amount, you're going to get some NBA teams. Take them apart. You decide right now. One of them's going over your head. Are you going with the right hand again or left? See, right hand again. It. Go for oh. it. All right, now this is it. You've got a few cards left. Okay. You're making the choice. I see five or six cards. Point to okay. one. And are you sure you want that one that right one there? Right are you there. sure? I don't want to touch it. You that grab one. grab out that team. Don't let me see. Don't let me see. Very important. You're going to see a team. It's going to prompt you for a player as well. Did you see it? Yes. I'm getting rid of these. I don't okay. want them. So right now, you're seeing the NBA. Uh-huh. 30 teams, hundreds of players. Yes. You've got a player on a team yes. in mind. Yes. Why do we love March Madness? Because you don't know what's going to happen. That's Thursday, correct. Thursday, a Except number one do. seed might drop to a number 16 seed. You don't it's know. It's never happened. Buzzer beater, it might happen this year. It might, but it I might. wouldn't go with it. Mike, rip up the card. Rip it into shreds. Rip it. Go rip on. It this is a thought in your mind. I'm not a magician. I'm a mentalist. Rip it up. you got your player. you got your team. Okay. I kind of think you're a demon at this yeah. point. Oh, no, no, <laughs> and this is that moment. The swoosh. The throw. Throw it through angel. here. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And oof, it's getting hot in here. Is yeah. it getting hot in here? Yeah. Tell us all. Tell oh, us all no, right no, now. No, no trick, no nothing. This. What team out of every single one of those teams? Which one of those teams? Grab that mic for me. Grab that hot mic. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was? It was. What, what team was that? It was the Lakers. Lakers, yeah. Get A lot of no players way. on the Lakers. Come Tell on. Tell us all. Which player on the Lakers out of that whole roster is in your mind? Tell me right now. What's their number? Who is it? Brandon Ingram. Yeah, take a oh! oh! 
Oh, uh, what are we yeah. thinking? Brandon Ingram. You're oh, oh, crazy. Oh, oh. Go, you uh, yeah. Comfortable with me trying to figure this out? Go ahead. It's almost like a Ouija board. It's subconscious. Okay. Corey has Let's baby. do this. Go back in time. Not a baby. Your first kiss. I bet this is something you haven't thought about for quite some time. Been a while. Yeah. Been a while, yeah. Is there any way anybody here would know that? No. Think no of it right now. Know. If I turn this around and it's got the name of your first kiss, would you be freaked out? Yeah. I'd be totally freaked out. So would I. Uh, are we, I'm not sure. Yes, that, it does not say that. I, that would have been blown away. <laughs> it just got a lot of different letters on there. Just a mess. But it's all about seeing patterns. Mentalism is figuring out what people are thinking. You want to be able to see this closely. Okay. Think of her name. Can we, uh, can we see this? Yeah, there we go. And imagine those letters starting to melt away. Oh my gosh. Do you see those starting to melt? Yeah. Like more and more of those yeah. letters are seeming to melt away. I'm seeing an S appear. What else have we got? Do you see that? Kind of starting to melt. Tell us her name. It starts with an S, doesn't it? Is that right? Yeah. And I'm getting more. I'm getting more. Oh my gosh. Almost this all. This is crazy. Is it? I'm going to turn this around just so you can see this melting, melting, melting. Is that? This is crazy. Is that Sherry? <gasps> <laughs> that's, okay, that's, that's weird. Oh my god. Nobody gosh. here would know that because it was a fourth grade. <laughs> You think it's going to win. No scores. Just write down really quick, really quick, and write down the score, too. And, and I want you to turn this way. Turn this way, Greeny. And Look at me. plug your ears. Plug your ears. I want you to plug your ears, and you should hear a voice in your head. Jalen, tell me. I don't want him to hear anything or see anything. Did you write down who you think is going to win? I did. And the score, you think? I did. Okay. Do me a favor. Greeny, open your eyes. Swear that I never talked to you about this before this moment. You had no idea. <laughs> who do you think is going to win this game? Who's he? Who yeah, he yeah, think? who's he? Seton Hall. What's the score gonna be? Like 80 to 73? Wait. I don't like this. I don't like this. It's creepy and you got in our brains. O's. You said what? You heard, I heard a, voice? a voice? I had my fingers like this and I heard a voice say, Jalen is picking Seton Hall, 80 to 73. What? A voice in my head. It just sounded like a person talking. Mailer. <laughs> Dude. That was the strangest thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. I, I, I... Danny Wolverton is an American magician who calls himself Special Head. On his YouTube channel, he says, quote, My aim is to expose America to more mystical and Eastern practices. The physical world is the illusion and the spiritual world is what is real. Through my performances, I intend to bring us back to an age of mysticism, reminding people that performance is a ritual and that magic can be spiritual. My name is Special Head. When I was traveling the world, I met a guru in Turkey who taught me how to control my body, mind, and spirit. <laughs> what I do is referred to by some people as levitation. My first audition, the response that I received was phenomenal. You're going to Vegas! Special Head promotes public nudity and was kicked out of his high school for streaking. That is, running around in the nude. I even got kicked out for streaking. And my high school recorded this amazing video and produced it. Thank you, Amphitus team. He is thankful that someone recorded it. On Special Head's official YouTube channel, he promotes his appearance on America's Got Talent as, quote, Demon Magician Special Head Deals with the Devil. This is my voodoo skull. My goodness, you're levitating, and he's in a trance. This is unbelievable. <sighs> oh, gosh, are you okay? Are you all right? Broken the guy's neck. Oh my 
How's it doing? This man just watched special head levitate and is stunned. And a sight with my eyes. I can't believe it. This man need to be talked about. I'm telling you. That's some powerful stuff there, brother. Darcy Oak is the biggest magician in Canada and one of the fastest growing magicians in the world. His magic videos on the internet have over a hundred million views. Darcy started practicing magic at the age of 10. Darcy was also a finalist on Britain's Got Talent. This is the biggest magician in the Middle East. His name is Ahmed El Bayid. His start in magic began at the age of five after his grandfather taught him a trick. He has worked many false signs and wonders in his area of the world. Notice that he, like many of the other top magicians, likes to wear a shirt with a skull on it. Those who are into the occult have a fascination with death. God says in Proverbs 8.36, quote, All who hate me love death. Hell is also eternal death. In Apocalypse 21.8, the Bible calls hell the second death, the one after a person's physical death. That's why these magicians clothe themselves with death. Their magic comes from hell. Deep into my eyes, you're gonna feel a surge of energy. It's a scary moment for the 18-year-old. What do you see? Death. And we were just backstage, and she said, Chris, can you do something with me? You know, and I, I kind of got inside her mind, and she saw death yeah. in me, and she completely lost see? her mind. She completely freaked out. What was that? People see different things. What was that? It's what you saw in me. I want them to see and smell death. Apocalypse 21 8 quote, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, they shall have their portion in the pool burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Notice that sorcerers are specifically named among those who will receive eternal death and everlasting fire in hell. I've had this uh, nightmare of dying in the fire. Jesus describes hell as a place of never-ending fire, and Apocalypse 14.11 refers to those in hell who have no rest day or night. The Greek word for sorcerer could also be translated as magician. The magicians I have covered were taken over by demons and possessed as a result of involvement in the occult or a desire to interact with spirits. They may have also gotten possessed by being in a state of grave sin or deliberately opening their minds up to the devil. Those are just some of the ways that demons have possessed individuals such as magicians. It is during the process of demonic infestation and interaction that a regular magician who previously could only perform tricks by natural acts of deception becomes a sorcerer, even though he is still called a magician. Through demonic influence and the help of evil spirits, the sorcerer magician is able to do things that defy a natural explanation. In this clip, magician Matt Franco thanks a person on TV for calling him a sorcerer after one of his, quote, magic tricks. You are like a sorcerer. Thanks, Kelly. You are a sorcerer. <laughs> I was just saying that uh, it's original illusions that have more in common like the special effect wizard deeds. <laughs> As a practitioner in the art of conjuring, I'm actually able to do things now that as a kid, I could only dream about. This is like Harry Potter for real. Dynamo's not a magician himself, he's a magician. Like a modern day Merlin, let's say. Will you say that? Yes, yes, that's good. I like that. I like that, yeah. 
new and aspiring magicians who desire to learn how to perform the most elite magic acts may at first think that it's a skill one can acquire through lots of hard work. For most magicians, they start out in magic simply with tricks that don't utilize supernatural assistance. The amateur magician enjoys the power or thrill he gets when performing the trick. He also enjoys the astonishment and wonder he causes in others who can't figure out how he did it. This can provide a strong temptation to move up to the next level, to do what it takes to be even more successful in astonishing and impressing others. Some magicians may then aggressively search for the quote secret knowledge that enables them to do more, with some being willing to do almost anything to become a top magician. When I was a kid, my dad was messing around with cards. I'd pick one, he pulled it out, and it was my card. I experienced that feeling of like, how did you do that? And I wanted to do that to other people. If the magician is aggressive in his search, he will discover that reaching the highest level of success in magic involves dabbling in the occult, submission to, or contact with a spirit. If that happens, the demon can enter the person or strongly influence or control him. This is why we see the top magicians immersing themselves in the occult, seances, contacting spirits, etc. The true God has revealed that practicing magic is similar to playing with a Ouija board. It's a way people open themselves up to demonic possession. Sadly, some are willing to let the devil have some control if it will enable them to achieve success or get what they want. The more a magician is open to the devil's influence, the more thoroughly the devil will control or influence him. The devil wants people involved in magic, but he won't get many interested in it if his top performers, his sorcerers, are doing things like foaming at the mouth. No, he wants his top magicians to come across as balanced, down-to-earth men, normal people who have cool skills. Don't burn us magician guys, we're just a, guys doing cool stuff, you know? The devil has gradually introduced the masses to the diabolical false religion of magic by presenting magic as if it's harmless fun and entertainment. But Satan uses magicians to deceive people and lead them to hell. In the Old Testament, Aaron turned his rod into a serpent before Pharaoh. Pharaoh's magicians were also able to turn their rods into serpents. But then Aaron's rod devoured the magician's rods. Jesus warns that in the last days, quote, there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. I can. Uh prototype supernatural powers in my career. So I know what it feels like to fly. I know what it feels like to disappear. I know what it feels like to, uh, uh, to uh, restore things from <laughs> badness. The signs and wonders Jesus mentions can include things such as false miracles. The magicians covered in this video certainly fit this prediction. Now that you've seen it, my dear, now that you've all looked at it carefully, may I show you a miracle. She says, that's impossible. Of course it's impossible, that's why we do it. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it, but you can create a miracle with just about anything. Earth, wind, fire, water. How can I manipulate those elements to create an apparent miracle? We're gonna have to create miracles. Well, the TV show I did about 100 plus episodes and uh, created, you know, miracles on TV. You know, I'm going to create miracles in the audience. And you see miracles literally inches away. I had such an amazing experience creating this show. It's, it does feature some, you know, some intimate miracles. I don't even know what you That's did. That's not even yeah. a trick, is it? It's not a trick. What I do is not tricks. Some people perceive it to be supernatural. So, so I don't want people to be tricked. I'm not showing them a trick. It's about magic. I have probably about a hundred and something people working on the show.
what the difference is between me and everybody else is everything, honestly. And I don't say that uh, like in a bad way. The way I look, what I do, my artistic um, uh, vision is very different. I don't believe in tricks. I don't believe in people wondering how does he do that. I want to, I care about how people feel when they watch it. Again, Jesus describes those who do these false signs and wonders as false Christs and false prophets. These magicians work wonders that some believe are similar to what Jesus did. They cannot do what Jesus did, but God allows the devil to use magicians to perform numerous signs that deceive people. They are false Christs performing false signs and wonders. They are attempting to either replace Christ or claim that they are like him while preaching a false gospel. Who's the greatest magician, Dave, besides yourself? Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> In the next clip, Chris Angel is angry because he feels Magician Dynamo stole his signature pose, which Chris says he got from Jesus. But he even like steals my like my my tableau, my pose, you know. Now I didn't invent that pose. That's uh, depicted by Jesus Christ. But I was the guy to do that in magic, you know. And uh, and the way that I look and my image. Chris says that he's the one who originally started using that pose in magic. When Jesus was crucified, his flesh was pierced with nails, and he hung on a cross for three hours. It's interesting that on one occasion, Chris Angel had hooks inserted into his back and then attached to a helicopter so that he could fly around in the air in his, quote, signature pose. He did something similar on another occasion. He described it in his book saying, quote, I hung for three hours. This is Chris Angel's Las Vegas dressing room for his show Believe. As you can see, Chris put up on his wall this blasphemous cross with his skull head image on top of it. As you can see on ChrisAngel.com, Chris describes this image as the, quote, Chris Angel skull logo. So he puts his logo on the cross and places it up on display on his wall. This is a blasphemy against Jesus Christ. This is a famous Greek magician who has levitated on a number of occasions. Notice how when he levitates, one foot goes over the other. Most believe that when Jesus was crucified, one nail went through both of his feet. David Blaine is also a false prophet and a false Christ. In this clip, notice that he puts his arms out like he is Christ being crucified. Blaine uses words to describe his, quote, miracles that have been used to describe real miracles of God. Quote, for those who believe no explanation is necessary, for those who do not, none will suffice. At the end of his interview on a show, Hans Klock was asked to do some tricks. The person doing the interview says Hans is, quote, like Jesus. What I really want to see, Hans, yeah. I want to see those hands, Hans, those hands do some tricks. Hands. Okay. I'll show you some, some um, sleight of hands. What's this? And the Dutch are quite famous for doing this. <laughs> hey! I show you some wow, more. Wow, that is proper I show you good. Some more. Look. I'm stood right next to you. <laughs> Look, I have cards. Yeah. Just ordinary cards. Okay. <laughs> Watch this. What? This we do this for the camera? Yeah. <laughs> I do one more for you. This is uh, one of my first tricks. <laughs> Beside the bottle one. Bring it on. It's an ordinary newspaper. Yeah. That's, that's read, that. Oh. So. 
He is actually ripping this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for telling the audience. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa! Here you go. <laughs> Thank you for the interview. Oh, you can keep this, by the way. This is present. That is astounding. Thank you. You're like Jesus. Some of Jesus' most well-known miracles were walking on water, multiplying loaves and fishes, and changing water into wine. This is a magician named Yif. He is the most famous magician in China. He has appeared to change water into wine. He says that Jesus was a magician like him who lived 2,000 years ago and performed this miracle. Attempting to be like Jesus, Chris Angel walked on water when he walked on Lake Mead, which is located near Las Vegas, Nevada. Dynamo walked on the River Thames in front of thousands of people. This was the key moment in Dynamo's career as a false Christ and a false prophet. Dynamo described this event as, quote, the moment I'd been building up to my whole life. The false Christ Dynamo also appeared to cause many fish to come out of an empty bucket during his trip to South Africa. They've been looking for a new street magician, and that guy is me. I'm gonna let you know that right now, Jabrizi. And I've been thinking about changing my name to Jabrizis, turning water into wine, walking on water, and Chicago's been down with that for a minute. It's your boy Jabrizi, or Jabrizis, and tune in to watch another Jabrizi episode. And we're gonna call these like, I guess, verses from a Bible. So this is like chapter one, verse one. Comment down in the comment section below, blessed by Jabrizas. If I get about 100 comments that says blessed by Jabrizas, I'll go ahead and do this on the street. Tune in tomorrow, Monday through Sunday, for another awesome magic trick. Also, make sure you go ahead and get you a Jabrizas shirt on my website. Be careful of sticking to the choices society gives you. Free your mind. Jabrizas, chapter 1, verse mother 1. And the son of the Holy Father, Jabrizas, said to the people, Know thyself, because how can one truly know the world? when they haven't fully known thyself. Jabrizas, chapter two, verse eight, 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 eight. So you're probably wondering to the title of this video, why do I call myself the new Jesus? And I am the new Jesus. I'm gonna try to make these trade places. What? Watch. And I have something inside my pocket. Let me see if I can get it. I'll keep it nice and low. Let's get to the trick that we've all been waiting for. Voodoo. Is that something to burn a little bit? Put your hand warm enough. These false miracles show that these magicians are most certainly among those false prophets and false Christs whom Jesus said would arise and perform great signs and wonders to deceive people. Here, false Christ's special head dresses as a homeless man and screams that he is Jesus Christ. And I'm 
Jesus Christ. Nobody believes me. I preach the gospel for I am the return of Christ. Almighty, come down to teach these mortals. I am the return of Christ. Here is Dynamo levitating in front of Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio. In his book, Dynamo shows a picture of himself wearing a shirt that says, quote, I am the future, with an arrow that points to himself. Dynamo also said, quote, I like to think my performances are larger than life. And quote, who knows, one day maybe I will move the moon like Superman did. Earlier in this video, a magician was shown who openly states that he makes contracts with demons for special powers. On his YouTube channel, he says you can, quote, become a living god, and on his website, he says you can, quote, learn secrets most people will never know about godlike power. You're about to learn secrets that most people will never know about godlike power. I want to tell you about a working that I recently did with Lucifuge Rofakal, one of the most intense demonic entities I've ever worked with. The devil's original temptation and promise in the Garden of Eden was, quote, you will become as gods if you disobey God and eat the forbidden fruit. Throughout history, there have been those who, in order to have success, talent, fame, or fortune, have been willing to sacrifice their souls. Consider the following statements from some of the world's most famous magicians. They indicate a willingness to do almost anything to get what they wanted in this world. If I said to you, your only time and condition on winning Britain's Got Talent if you did the trick topless, would you take that on? If I had to take my shirt yeah. off to win the yeah. show? I'd take my pants off to win the show. Oh. You know, you want, you want to embrace all of it and you want to live for the moment, right? Chris Angel, quote, I so desperately wanted to achieve my dreams, I didn't care how it came. I'd do whatever I could to be in front of an audience. I fantasized about fame all the time. I usually found myself staring out the window of our family van, imagining myself on all of the billboards that dotted the sides of the Long Island Expressway. I daydreamed it was me up there in the Calvin Klein or Coca-Cola ad. I'd imagine my face on the body of the models. I tried to feel what it was like to have thousands of people stare at a billboard with my image on it. My ego is never satisfied. I thought back to the first time I came to Las Vegas 10 years ago. I was driving the cheapest rental car I could find down the strip, dreaming how someday I would be headlining in Vegas like Siegfried and Roy and Lance Burton. I fantasized about my own marquee, my name up there in lights. I've always been willing to do anything and everything to assure my own success. Dynamo, speaking of when he was a child, said, quote, I would have given anything to walk on water. Walking across the River Thames, for example, was from when I was like 10 years old. I wished then I could walk on water, and it just became like an ambition. From that to this. And the trick of walking on water really about showing his childhood bullies they had no power over him. 
In this picture from Dynamo's book, Dynamo looks out at a multitude of boats and other property and says, quote, one day this will all be mine. Dynamo, quote, I want to change the face of magic. I want in years to come when someone mentions the word magic for people to instantly think of Dynamo. If you look at my predecessors, whenever you think of magic, the image of David Copperfield comes to mind. But in a hundred years, when I'm long gone, I want people to think of my name like they think of Houdini. I want to leave a legacy that is that strong. I'm getting record-breaking viewing figures and winning awards left, right, and center. The way I look at it now, you know, I'm, I'm competing, I'm performing on stages. What Kanye West would perform on, what, you know, Taylor Swift, um, Sheffield Zone, Big Mid Horizon, you know, like, I'm kind of in these, you know, places where, you know, I'd come here and watch Arctic Monkeys perform, you know, and now I'm on this stage myself, it's, it's insane. Magic has allowed me to travel all over the world. It doesn't matter what happens, as long as people remember the name. And that stuck with me, and now, you know, from here on in, it doesn't matter what happens. You know, as long as people remember the name Dynamo in years to come, and Dynamo becomes synonymous with the word magic. I really want people to believe in my magic because then anything is possible. At the end of his book, Dynamo says, quote, I'm not meant to be able to walk on water or fly through the air, but I do. I'd urge anyone else to truly believe they can do whatever they want to. Nothing is impossible. As mentioned earlier, Dynamo's 2013 book is called Nothing is Impossible. The Bible also uses almost the exact same words. However, the big difference is that it says nothing shall be impossible with God. God is the only one with whom all things are possible. The limited signs and wonders performed by these magicians with the help of the devil are simply what God allows them to do because he gives men free will and allows them to be deceived and used by evil spirits. Knowing if you believe and you want it enough, nothing's impossible. As a magician, I think everything is possible. Belief that anything is possible. To believe that anything is possible, anything will be possible. Chris Angel quote, my work is to make you believe that anything is possible. To realize that anything is possible, what seems impossible is very possible. An overwhelming desire to accomplish whatever you set out to do, even if it means risking your life. Magic is also a false religion because top performers frequently and unnecessarily risk their lives for the entertainment of others. This is a violation of God's commandment. In fact, many magicians admit that they constantly put their lives at risk for the entertainment of others. And it's just really good to have everyone talking about the magic. The thing I love most is that I get to do what I love. I put my life at risk at some times, like in this instance, for people's entertainment pleasure. And I just hope I keep enjoying it. You're not going to believe our show. Tonight, I'm going to hang upside down from a burning rope and risk my life for your entertainment pleasure. We are minutes away from David Copperfield putting his life on the line. Once the torch starts burning through the rope, he'll be on a 90-second race with death. Tonight, what I'm going to attempt is not an illusion, but rather an escape where the consequences could be deadly. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win this show. And if that means risking my life, then that's exactly what I have to do. Tonight could end catastrophically. In his book, Behind the Illusion, Darcy Oak describes himself by saying, quote, I'm a real person who's prepared to put his life on the line for your entertainment. In a sick sort of way, I really like being in danger and getting myself out of those situations. Darren Brown's acts of, quote, entertainment included risking his life playing Russian roulette on live TV. Brown put the gun directly to his head while pulling the trigger, attempting to avoid the one loaded chamber. And also, James, I've signed a disclaimer. I've signed a form that uh, absolves you from any legal responsibility for this, all right?
Chris Angel, quote, I know my family worries about me and my insane attempts at life or death situations. Yes, I've, uh, I, the show is incredibly dangerous. I put my life on a line when I do a lot of these demonstrations. And this season, more than ever, I felt like, is this going to be the demonstration? It's going to be the nail in my coffin. It was nuts, but I knew that if I was going to die, I was going to die doing my art form. So that, you know, people don't really push their own limits of what is possible. I really am possessed with pushing my own envelope. I'm going to push it too far one day. Pain is a beautiful thing. When you feel pain, you know you're alive. People can watch me do it and experience it through me because I obviously wouldn't want anybody to try this at home. This is, this is like life or death. Making a conscious decision to go forward with what I do and if that should happen, then you know, that's the consequences of, of playing with fire. Anything I have to do, uh, put, my, put my body in arm's way to do anything, I, I do it for these guys and girls. Uh... There's five coffins, five ways I can live or five ways I can die. Okay, we're live in Chicago, and at this very moment, David Blaine is uh, putting his life at risk in an attempt to set a new world record underwater. In this clip, Dynamo says he is willing to die while performing magic because it may actually help spread the false religion of magic. I believe magic is an art form, and I want to completely try and progress the art and move forward with it. So, you know, I've got to push myself out of my comfort zone. Yes. And, you know... If I die for the art, well then, at least, I'll have pushed it forward. Hey, see, that, that's where we would disagree on this subject. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to die for your art? What's, what's, what's Stephen, what's going on with you? You know, I want to leave a legacy. The most terrifying thing I've done whilst filming Magician Impossible was a few weeks ago, actually, in LA. I was on top of the LA Times building, leaning over the edge, just before I walked down the wall. And it was terrifying. It was exhilarating all at the same time, but it was scary. And My next stunt that I'm working on is much more dangerous than the ice was. And the next stunt, I could easily die if anything goes wrong. I'm going to do that here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get roped up, cuffed up by the police, locked up. I'm going to have lead boots strapped on like the mobsters, the gangsters used to drown the bodies in the river. And I'm going to be attached to a helicopter or put off the top of the tower bridge. I'm going to be released straight down into the river. Now when you hit water from that high, it's like hitting pavement. It's very serious. When you hit it that high, if you're off one centimeter, you're dead. The trouble is, I mean, what's, you know, what's next? I mean, the sort of the path that you're on, <laughs> it's getting more and more dangerous, isn't it? We want you around, David. Well, the next one I decided I'm going to take all safety measures out so the way the safety divers were able to jump in and invade the space because they were worried for me. The next one, there will be no ability for anybody to enter, so it's me either doing it or not doing it, but nobody can interfere. I'd rather come out in a body bag than come out in the middle of it. Some people think I have a death wish. For me, when I confront death is when I'm most alive. David Blaine, quote, I appreciated Chabert's act because he was really risking his life. After I was buried alive for a week, I knew I had to do something that was far more dangerous. Let's see how it really looks like it's almost... Yeah, it's in there. Okay. You can see the bottom. Is it possible to see? Oh, yeah, I know. Through the top. See it going through. Yeah. Oh, you know what you could do? Here, you could pull it out for me if you want on a number of occasions, Blaine has stuck sharp objects right through parts of his body. Not only does he have no pain while he does this, there is no blood and no evidence of an entrance or exit wound when the blade is taken out. See how it looks like That's the worst like thing I've ever really seen in my life. <laughs> what are you doing? See how really believable oh. I'm not good with this. That's crazy. You see that? How the are you? Wait, what, what do you mean? How are you doing it? You've stuck a needle through your arm. It looks pretty real, right? I'm sorry, I don't understand. How is that not real? 
What do you mean it looks pretty real? <laughs> well, it looks really real, right? I don't understand. Right, okay. Obviously, if that's if that is a trick, how is that a trick? How is that not a needle going through your arm? You know what, Ricky, here, do me a favor. Grab the needle right here. Yeah? And pull it out so you can see the magic trick. Go ahead, grab it. Yeah, good. Grab what do you it mean? Yeah, grab pull it, it out, out all the way it's come? Yeah, yeah, pull it out. Good. Just pull it right out. <laughs> right, OK. Pull it out. Is that needle going through your arm? Well, I'll pull it out and you'll see how it works. Pull it. I don't understand. Oh, David, what have you done? Are you a maniac? This is real. Sorry, this is real. That's real. That's not a trick. There was a man from the Netherlands named Mirin Dajo. Hanging around pubs, he made money by letting people pierce his body with, quote, dagger-like objects. He also swallowed glass and razor blades. He was also able to have swords and other items pass right through his body, quote, astounding the medical community. Dajo allowed doctors themselves to pierce him. Dajo even ran several laps in front of doctors with a blade right through his body. He said he could do this because he had, according to Dajo's assistant, the help of several guardian angels. Dajo said his message and mission was to unite mankind. During Dajo's early years, he had all sorts of, quote, paranormal experiences and claimed to be a prophet. In 1947, headlines read that Dajo was, quote, like a second messiah. Dajo's angels would tell him what tests he had to subject his body to. In 1948, these angels told Dajo to eat a steel needle. Shortly after he did this, one of his arteries ruptured, killing him. When the devil has concluded that he has used a magician long enough, he may decide to kill him. If God allows the devil to kill the human instrument he's using, that person dies and descends into the eternal torments of hell. The angels that were helping Dajo during his life were fallen angels, that is to say, demons. The Bible says that Satan will transform himself into an angel of light in order to deceive people. Practicing the false religion of magic, which is of the devil, not of God, is similar to eating the forbidden fruit. It is to accept the same kind of, quote, offer the devil made originally in the Garden of Eden. This offer has been made throughout all of human history. If you just break God's law, Satan says, quote, you shall be as gods. Uh, I'm not him, I'm Jabri, the God. I created angels. I'm the king of the world! For that one moment, you know, you can, I, can, yeah. I look at people's faces, you can kind of start a religion at that moment. We are with David Copperfield, one of the best magicians of all time. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very good. It's warm out. Thank you for the weather. You can give me credit for the weather because, you know, I'm a magician. I could make it happen if you want to give me the credit. That's true. Well, I think magic in itself, obviously, is taking Mother Nature and turning it upside down. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's taking Mother Nature and saying, hey, ignore the rules that life gives you. You know, the fact that you can't float and you can't disappear and you can't be sawed in half and things aren't supposed to appear and disappear. That throw that out the window and you're going to disarm you and suspend, and suspend your disbelief, leave your doubts at the door, and we're going to show you something fantastic. That's obvious. What, that's what I'm going to do, no matter what. Magic is everywhere, in everyone, in every place, everything. You know, magic as a kid gives you the ability to do things that adults don't understand, so that's power. Magic is power. It that gives you true. the ability to do something that other people don't know how to do. I had the world at my feet. I was living the dream, and it seemed like things would stop me. What do you say to people that kind of think there's something else behind your magic, another force behind your magic, or something that helps you create these illusions? Maybe there is. So you get the chance to come in person and see it for yourself, and after leaving the show, guarantee seeing will be believing. 
By accepting Satan's offer, some of these magicians have received the ability to perform great signs and wonders. They also receive incredible wealth, fame, and the world's praises during their short time on earth. Matthew 4.8 says that the devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He told Jesus that he would give him all these things, quote, if falling down you will adore me. So if you want to be a better close-up magician or the next big star in magic, These magicians receive what some believe is paradise on earth. David Copperfield owns 11 islands in the southern Bahamas described on his website as, quote, truly paradise on earth. On his website, davidcopperfield.com, Copperfield has a quick video tour of his islands. The link is called Enter Paradise. Right above that, there's another link to a website dedicated to his islands. That site provides much more information. The first thing that you see on that site is Discover Paradise. In the message from David's section, Copperfield says about his islands, quote, I invite you to enjoy these images of paradise. Who, who's the best in the world? Copperfield's definitely up there. He, you know, in his head, uh, he, he was untouchable. And, and the guy, he owns an island because of magic. So we're going to hit the town and have some fun. Welcome home, Senor. Thank, Thank you so much. Wow. Heaven. I travel so much nowadays. It seems like my feet hardly touch the ground. Southside. Ooh. Can't get enough. From city to city. Country to country. Growing up, I took cards with me everywhere that I would go. I never dreamed that those 52 cards would take me all over the world. When I was a kid, I used to dream about a place where anything was possible. A world where I could do anything and be anything I wanted to be. And nothing could hold me back. So I became a magician. A master of the impossible. And somehow, my dream came true. These magicians have been used by Satan to get people involved with the occultic false religion of magic. The devil wants people to practice or endorse it. He also wants people to praise those who engage in the demonic art of sorcery. This is a way the devil implicates people in mortal sin. It's also how he possesses people or brings them under the control of demons. Before the judgment seat of Christ, the devil will then be able to accuse and convict numerous souls of breaking God's law through their endorsement of or direct involvement in sorcery. He's with me here tonight, and I would like to introduce all of you to my spirit energy, Desmond. Okay. Including you, Heidi. But I need you all to be open to it. Are you open to meeting Desmond? Good. What I need is your participation. You're involved in it. The more you involve yourself, the more magic will happen to you personally. Okay, amazing. So wait, are you pulling people up from the audience? Oh yeah, and there's doing so all... much interaction oh, that's, that's happening the best. on stage and on a big screen so everyone can see it. So you can become part audience. of the show. Every single person in the entire audience is involved in yeah, the show. Every, the show. Single person, every single person. Every single person. This 2010 article on Chris Angel said that Chris, quote, plans an interactive mind-reading experiment to connect with viewers on their cell phones and through their TV sets while the program is broadcasting. David Copperfield has held many magic show specials on national television over the last 40 years. In these specials, as well as in his regular stage performances, he frequently asks for volunteers to participate in his magic acts. During his TV appearances, Copperfield would also ask the viewing audience to participate in his acts of sorcery. 
He's not kidding. In fact, when we do this, it's the first time where you at home are going to actually participate in an illusion. And it's important that uh, when we ask you to, to get out of your chairs and actually touch your TV screen. And if you do, you're going to experience something really, really incredible. Yes, right. Come right up here <laughs> and touch my finger. Come on, touch my finger right there. Are you touching it? Stay where you are, because in a minute I'm going to ask you to touch your TV screen and you're not going to believe what you're going to... Follow my instructions exactly, you're not going to believe what's going to happen. It's going to actually happen to you right at home. And everyone at home will see the magic, just like you see it here with our live audience. Oh, and everybody at home, get a deck of cards ready, because later in the show I'm going to try to make the magic happen right in your own living room. Sound good? <laughs> Down your hands and come up really close to the TV set. Come on. Get out of your chair. Come right next to the TV so you can touch the screen. Later, you will be asked to touch your television screen and take part in an illusion with David Copperfield. Follow his instructions and you'll experience the magic right in your own home. Get ready to touch your television screen and experience the magic right in your own home. It's your turn to get into the act. The only thing I ask you is to come up to the television close enough to touch the screen. It's important that you can touch the screen because you're going to feel and experience something totally amazing. In this clip, Copperfield asks the crowd and the national TV audience to venerate or worship him. Everybody go like this. Go like this. Everybody go like this. Go like this. Everybody at home too. Go like this. The message on the screen tells the viewers at home to, quote, do it now. Everybody try this. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Do it. Close your eyes. Later on, Copperfield speaks to those who volunteered to participate in one of his magic acts. He tells them that he is sending them to hell, that hell is hotter than Hawaii, and that they will be seeing familiar faces in hell. It's totally out in the open. We have nothing nothing to hide. You all look a little scared. Don't worry, we're just going to send you all straight to hell. <laughs> hell is just like Hawaii, only hotter, with more familiar faces. After you get your flashlights, I'm going to have you close your eyes and picture your perfect place. That's where you're going to go. I need you all to raise your right hand. People in the audience, raise your right hand, raise your right hand. We're not going to cut the camera. Keep it rolling. Take them up into the air. Witnesses, make sure you can see all the way around the sides and behind. Brooke, over here, Brooke. Stick your hand out the side, right here. Down, 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 down. Good, take this flashlight. And both of you take your seats and tell me when you're ready. Now close your eyes and picture your perfect place. 